morning everybody good morning we're starting with a brand new file today gem.py all those birds are loud as fuck just woke up I figured I'd come right here and stream for you guys that's how dedicated I am uh, I told you last night on Instagram what this stream was gonna be about uh, let me pop out the chat here uh, no we speak English on this channel bro real American yeah 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 first team uh, Alright, so uh, we see we have another computer here called Quiet. I'm um, in Quiet. I just ran CL info. We have a AMD Radeon XT. Blah 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 blah. So if you see AMD graphics cards flops, um, should we actually? Can we actually? Are we on? I don't think we're SSH anywhere. We'll start on my Mac and then we'll move over to Quiet. It's not going to matter. It's not going to matter too much um, at the beginning. Yeah, you know what? No, no, no. We'll, we'll do it right on. We'll do it right on Quiet, guys. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, you know, let you down like that. I said we're gonna deliver. Oh wow! I gotta, I gotta wake up. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta wake up, boys. Yeah, I gotta wake up. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I gotta, gotta. Uh... I was gonna make a joke about waiting for the Adderall to kick in, but uh, you guys would take me seriously. I think that I actually took Adderall, so no, you guys can't have that joke. Sorry. Let's go over here and quiet here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Right, we're gonna create a new file called gem. Start it with a nice user bin of Python 3. Yeah, we're making the text big today. Because today is a noob lesson for noobs. We're going to teach noobs something. If you're a noob, today is your day. But if you're a non-subscriber, I'm sorry you don't get to talk. Uh, because, you know, look, man, discrimination is okay. As long as you discriminate on the right things. Now, here's the thing about being a subscriber. Anybody can be a subscriber if you just click the subscribe button. Um, and you're like, oh, well, I'm poor and I have circumstance and that's too bad, bro. Like, if we got to draw the line somewhere as a society. We got to just all agree. That's the social contract. Wow, now you're a subscriber. Congratulations. Congratulations. Um, all right, let's have some more coffee. And let's get started. All right, does everyone know how to multiply a matrix? That's important. NumPy is NP, and I'll show you guys how to multiply matrix. <sighs> so um, let's make two big matrices. A and B. Um, actually, let's make a variable called N so they won't actually be big. Right. And then the way that you multiply a matrix, you use this thing called the uh, it's called the add operator. Uh, in 
and then you just you know print out your multiply matrix. Now, how big should C be if I multiply n by n matrix, right? There we go. C is 16 by 16. So uh, that's great. That multiplied pretty fast. Um, let's let me let me check on my 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 audio settings. We're trying to deliver quality content to you guys. Oh, my webcam looks a little faded. Yeah. Wow. I could have a little more dynamic range on that. Oh, okay. Well, first off, I'm gonna make me a little tinier. Good. 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 All right, audio is good. Yeah, we're really trying to deliver a quality stream experience for the noobs today. Yeah, I, I'll listen to you because you're a subscriber. Um, all right, cool. All right, so everyone knows how to multiply. What do I call this stream? Can you multiply a matrix noob lesson? Okay, we're done, right? We're done. We did it. We multiplied a matrix. No, we did it. Because now we're going to make the matrix big. You're going to see the problem. Oh man, that took forever. That was so slow. What if I make it even bigger? CPUs are just too fast these days. Wow. Wow, that's so slow. Look, I'm just sitting here. All right. So, uh, oh, actually, let's do something that's. Uh, uh, NumPy unfortunately sets the default data type to be uh, float64. Uh, Randan got an unexpected keyword argument D type. Boo. Boo. Mm, Mora cut her hair in Baltimore right before we left. All right, uh, now that's a little bit too slow. Let's let's pick a good speed, 496. So, yeah, 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 we can as type, we can as type, okay. We just as type, okay. The problem with as type is look, now we're allocating that. I just see the memory, I just see the memory and it pains me. Okay, I'm kicking the table and I know that makes a terrible noise on the video, so I'm gonna try to not do that. I'm gonna try to be uh, less, uh... okay. Rest my hands nicely. Uh, we're good. So, how many? Oh, J Blow. Good morning. Good morning. This is a great noob lesson for people. This is a great noob lesson because this is actually one of the questions we ask in the comma interview. How much compute does matrix multiplication take? All right. So, how big is this matrix? This matrix is n squared in memory. And then this output matrix is n squared in memory. But for each cell in the output matrix, you're multiplying two vectors together. Does everyone remember how to multiply matrices? If you don't remember how to multiply matrices, I, I understand some new people showed up. So you know what? I'm not even going to make fun of you because you know what? Not everybody went to high school. Some people, some people were underprivileged and they only went to the madrasa. Yeah, yeah, so uh, this is for you. Uh, that's a terrible, I'm sure like three blue, one brown has like a, okay, yeah, that's kind of good. All right, does everyone understand? You have to do a vector product between the two things to get the cell and the output matrix. Right, does everyone know how to multiply matrices? So N squared output cells with N uh, compute each and it's not actually n um, If you look you have to multiply Okay, so the way that like these two become this one is you multiply this one times this one But then you also have to add it to this one times this one So you actually have to do 2n compute you have to do both the multiply and the add I know you say it's a fuse multiply accumulate blah 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 blah, blah but Regardless so this is doing 3n times n times 2n computes. Uh, you can't write 2n because this is not algebra. Wow, that's a huge number. Um, so 
Those, by the way, are flops. You know how everybody always talks about flops? That's what a flop is. Uh, it's a floating point operation. So let's use my newfound F strings. I love F strings. I gotta put the F outside the string. I can't put the F in the string. All right. Uh, and let's divide that by 1E9 and let's say that's a G flop. No, we gotta we gotta put a let's put a I don't I don't like all those significant figures. They're, they're just upsetting to me. Okay. So um let's say flops equals this. Oh wow, this is a really noob lesson for noobs. Uh, they're actually not flops because they're not floating point operation per second. So that's a flop, and now we have to get second. So we'll start here with start time equals time dot monotonic. Always use monotonic um, because if you don't use monotonic, the time can change. Have you heard about daylight savings? I heard the Supreme Court's going to make daylight savings illegal, but until they do, so we can say s equals et minus st. Eh, you guys just know that. And then, well, no, it'll be nice because we can write flop divided by s, right? And then does everyone know what flop divided by s is? That's flops. I think that number is going to be really big. Oh, got to close my bracket. Why, why, why am I, sorry, I'm, I'm still waking up. And I don't have any Folgers, but I do have Stumptown to exp Wow, wow, that's a crazy amount of flops. Um, in order to get, we'll throw some Gs. All right, does everyone, wow, wow, I'm being too nice to you guys with the, with the new lessons today. Uh, does everyone understand what the G means in G flops? Does everyone understand? Giga, right? Mega is 10 to the third. Do you know what 10 to the third means? Does anyone here not know what 10 to the third means? Yeah, like Giga Chad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Wow, wow, wow. Look at how nice I'm being in the noobs today. I'm even going to show you what SI prefixes are. All right, like, I, I'm just like, people don't know this kind of shit, man. You know, not everybody went to school. Some people, I don't know, they, what are they always saying? They're always saying, like, Girls in poor countries don't go to school or something. Well, I don't think anyone here is a girl, but in case you are, uh, and you went, you lived in a poor country and didn't go to school. No, no, you're all, you're all, you're all young men who didn't pay attention in high school. Bro, school sets you up for success later in life. Um, all right. Giga, Mega, Terra, Peta, Exa, Zeta, and Yada. Right, and everyone, if you don't understand what this notation means, bro, like, I don't know. Go go read a seventh grade algebra book. Um, cellophane, if that were actually true. <laughs> um... It means the number of zeros. Wait, wait, are you? Oh, I don't know Matt Mulvers' dot product. Nobody knows the difference between those things. Um, <laughs> I think one of them is just like a matrix vector multiply, but we can we can go there. Uh, I'm 12 and what is this? It's called SI notation and you should learn it. All right, uh, the lessons are gonna get less noob after this. So if you're like, George, this is too noob for me, don't worry, it's gonna get harder. Um, no one's going to watch this one, but if I put hacking in the video title, you guys would be like, oh, book talk, going to learn hacking. These aren't in freedom units. Well, let me tell you, America is a declining uh, empire, and you'll better learn Chinese. Uh, Nihao ma. No, no, I learned Spanish in school. That's right. Oh, add on the blockchain. No, no, no. Then the worst kind of people would watch. At least the kind of people who want to learn hacking are kind of cool. The people who are on the blockchain are like... Um, 
does Russia use metric? Bro, uh, yeah, I would imagine. Uh, but okay, all right. This is SI prefixes are universal. Look at the international system of units. That's right. The UN probably approves these. Uh, okay. So uh, yeah, all right, and now we're back. So let's actually just make this T flops, and then we all should remember that T was 10 to the 12 because everybody read that Wikipedia page. Thank you. All right, good. So uh, oh, how do I, I? I hate all these significant figures. Uh, and we'll put the slash. I, I think that that's actually the right way to stylize T flops. Let me see if that's right. A teraflops. Okay, so wow, my CPU with NumPy is getting one teraflop. That's pretty good. Do I even need anything faster? Is that using all my cores? All right, well, it's using all my cores to deliver that crazy teraflop of performance. I didn't do that wrong, did I? That, so I'll show you the CPU I have. It's, it's a Ryzen. No, it's 16 cores. Okay, I forgot that. Wow, that's a 16 core processor? Why am I buying fancy? I should just get everybody at work Ryzen's. I'm just going to buy everybody at work one of these. No, I bought myself a thread ripper. Um, I bought myself uh, this one. So this is even faster than Horizon. Where is Horizon? It's pretty good. This one isn't that much faster. I bought myself this one for work. Wow, look at that price difference. It's insane. Right, that's 32 cores, so it's double the cores. Yeah, I guess I didn't want downgrades for anybody. Um, you said you're not poor. Well, you just subscribed. That proves you're not poor. Everybody else, I have some questions about you. Uh, we're gonna have to go get more coffee in a minute. We're waking up. The best part of waking up is coffee. Wow, so our CPU already gets a teraflop, so are we done? No, we're not done because we have a brand new Radeon RX 6900 XT that's supposed to get us even more flops. Well, let's just actually look to see what, what the theoretical. Score in G flops. Oh, all right. Wait. So this is actually doing an S gem. What does the S stand for in S gem? Single precision general matrix multiply. So that's actually exactly what we're doing. Uh, what if we do a D gem? Let's, let's just see how much slower it is. Wow, we got a hype train going. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is a D gem. No, D gems are about half as fast. All right, cool but we're gonna go back to an S gem. Now, you say, George, why would you need to go faster? You're already getting one teraflop. And the answer is because one teraflop is pathetic. A human brain is like 20 petaflops, man. That would take 20,000 CPUs. That would cost uh, a lot of money. I don't know what madness is. What's madness? Is this like a thing? Is this like somebody who already wrote like a nice tuned kernel? No. Wait, what? Multiplying matrices without multiplying? We introduced a learning-based algorithm. What kind of 
of a scam is this? <laughs> I was not planning to implement any of this. I appreciate this is why I stream. You taught me something. Could have given me a real link, bro. Ten X faster. Compressing. Approximate requires zero multiply ads. What? Wow. I thought this was a noob lesson. This shit looks mad complicated. Let's get more coffee. And then, uh, sorry, I was having a much simpler plan for today. Uh, no, we're doing something. Um, it's half as fast because it uses the same SIMD registers. Well, let's try to figure out what's the theoretical gigaflops of this Ryzen. Mm, well, that's just a benchmarks. Let's see if anyone knows. I'm trying to figure out how close we're getting to the theoretical. So if we have 16 cores, what do these things have? AVX2? Should we start with a CPU? AMD product pages usually list the theoretical flops. Um, for this one, maybe not. What kind of junk product page is this? AVX2, but not for, it does not have AVX 512. AVX 512 is stupid. Um, well, okay. Should we, before we go to the GPU, let's try rewriting this. Let's see if we can achieve the same performance in C. Uh, Or get a dot out. Who likes a dot out? Um, what segmentation fault? What did I even do? It doesn't fit that on the stack. All right, fine. No stack for you. We'll put it on the heap. Well, it's not the heap. That's in the BSS. We'll put it in the BSS. 
variably modified A at file scope? Wait, what? What the hell? Bro, I thought I knew C. What kind of error is this? You cannot have a static array which size is given at a variable. All right, fine. Define n four nine six. Is that is that better? No, we're gonna use const expert. Is that right? Oh, there we go. All right, good. Well, that was so stupid. So we're going to go back to uh, define. Const expert sucks. Because then we have to wait forever for a C++. Const is not really const. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Write static. Who knows what static means? Okay. Um... Let's replicate time to i. So you guys ready for how you multiply a matrix? So for int x equals zero, x less than n, x plus plus. Um, let's do a y outside. All right, all right. Um, actually, this should be free, right? And then we have an inner one called k. Notice how my flops are, uh... C sub y, x equals zero. Actually, let's float ack equals zero. C sub y sub x equals ack. Ack plus equals a sub x sub k times b sub k sub y. Oh, it's like this, I think. I should probably write an accuracy test for my matrix multiplier. Um, all right, well, that, what did I do? Oh, I forgot a semicolon here. Wow, wow, this is the slowest. Well, we're not getting any flops now. Can't even multiply that, it's too big. All right, let's, uh, let's get some, let's make a timer. C get time uh, monotonic. Oh, really, is this how I have to do it? Use clock get time. Code in this programming language. So you know what? Let's use a double here, so we have lots of precision.
Wow, this is just a lesson. I have to write in Rust and take even five times longer. What do I have to include? Time spec or some crap? Where is this? What do I have to include? Does someone want to post it? Guys, this is this is a great noob lesson for noobs. Even noobs can be learning something today. Hmm, I have to include studio. Oh no, we overflowed the int. Don't overflow the int. Let's cast it to a float. C, we get zero G flops. Let's make this that and make this that and see if we still get the same. All right, good. We're getting somewhere. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a pathetic amount of flops. Zero. Let's see what we did. My nanos is broken. What did I do? Did I not cast it? Do I have to like cast it to something? Like this? Oh, duh, sorry. Yeah, 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 thank you. Thank you for paying attention. Well, now we're casting it too. Okay. We're getting an absolutely pathetic amount of about of flops. That seems like it's right, though. All right. Well, this is uh, we're gonna have to change it to G flops because well, let's change this to T flop. No, we we'll change this. Didn't like a G? Where's the invalid syntax? That's a good number of G flops. We can uh, use more. Okay. So that's how much we get from uh, from Python and uh, from C. We sit and wait for a while and get a pathetic 0.7 G flops. It's probably slowing it down trying to declare it each time. Bro, it's not. <laughs> you know what? I will humor you, Slay, because you're a subscriber. But if you'd prefer, I will write that, and you'll see you're going to get the same speed. All right, great. Now that we've established that compilers aren't stupid. Oh, I know what we need. O2. Let's try O2. Is that going to improve things? Ironically, that might have actually... Ooh, look, it's a little bit faster. Wow. Um... You need like two more inner loops, do I? No, my matrix multiply is correct, right? Ah, tiling, oh yes. Okay, well now we're getting into what today's lesson is going to be. Um, so uh, this is a really bad way to write a matrix multiply because it's very slow. So we're gonna have to do some uh, local, local cache stuff. We need to write a cache aware algorithm. Yes, yes, you understand why it's so crappy. It's because it doesn't know about the cache. 
How is it that one algorithm is literally a thousand X faster? Let's see if we can get this one to match this one. And then if we have time, we're gonna go on to the GPU. Uh, teach others about the order of for loops, okay. So let's go back to understanding what a matrix multiply is and why it's uh If you do this, it's really bad. We basically want to do it in little blocks, right? So let's make some inner loops. Uh, and then let's define block equals 32. Out here, we're going to do block. Uh, we'll call these that um, for y equals by, by plus block, y uh, is plus plus, but this should be plus equals block. Let's see if this is going to be fast. Now, this only works because uh, you know, this thing is a, is a multiple, so let's add an assert here, n divide n mod block equals zero. Right? Don't, don't accidentally change something, right? We're preventing future people who use this high quality code uh, from having issues uh, in the future. All right, so let's take a look at our matrix multiply. Oh, uh, we have, we didn't, we implicitly included uh, assert. Okay, so we include assert. Hmm, we got the same speed and it's terrible. Uh, all right, well, I don't really understand why that's so terrible. I thought that would make things faster. I legitimately thought that would make things faster. It did not. Never mind. <laughs> I have no idea how to make anything faster. How come that didn't make things faster? I worked hard on that. No, we're multiplying a matrix. We're not ray tracing. Uh, try it without O2? No. It, how did that not get faster? It's not faster if I don't do it O2. I don't understand how this is the same speed. It's almost like I'm not compiling the code. The memory order is still row major. Well, one thing we can do is transpose. Oh, wait, no, I think we want to do this. All right, pretend that we transpose the matrix. Oh, look at that, it's faster. Um. I still don't, all right, well, this is effectively the same thing if we say block equals one. So we can, we can experiment with that. How does the block not matter? I legit thought this would improve things a lot. Maybe it doesn't matter because my thing's so tiny. One block should be in one lane or a few cache lanes. No, it can't optimize with O2. It's ruining my lesson. Or is the timing incorrect? Oh, maybe. That seems right. I don't, couldn't have messed that up again, could I? I 
don't understand how my cache awareness didn't make it faster. My, my, my point is we're not even close to NumPy yet, and now I'm not really sure why. No, neural one FPS, we stay on topic in these streams and if you don't stay on topic, you get the ban. Um, what happens if you just multiply numbers instead of reading the memory? Yes, it's a lot faster. No, 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 all right. Uh, it turns out blocks don't matter, so we're just gonna uh, you know what? I know what might make. Okay, okay, okay. I have an idea. Maybe the problem is this store. should really have a correctness check. We'll add one in a minute. Does none of this matter? Yeah, let's get the compute for now. Okay, if we're only doing the stores, we're getting a good number of G-flops. Well, yeah, but that doesn't actually do anything, okay? It's the reads that kill you on a matrix multiply. No, no, no. We're not even worried about the big old complexity. Those those other matrix algorithms are kind of like, they're kind of just like computer science scams. The trick is to write this algorithm well. Well, so if you take a look, what we've written now in C is giving us 3.3 G-flops. And this one is getting um, one T-flop. So uh, you are late. Good morning. Um, so somehow NumPy is still 33 times faster than what we wrote in C. Maybe if we use C++, it'll be faster. Oh, it's a little faster in C++. No, are we, are we Clang? Probably already using Clang. Okay. Hello. If you write the same in Python without the NumPy, no, don't worry about that. Mm. How come this isn't fast? Let's start using AVX instructions. There, it's like this stuff. MM. Mall. 
mall PS. Is there a mall act one? Let's just read the instructions. Here we go. This pass ad. Pack line right. This is gonna oh, see I hit the table and it makes noise, and I'm sorry. Um Multiply and add. Packed, signed, and unsigned bytes. Multiply, packed, unsigned integers. Where are the floats? I thought this was about floats. This, I guess, GCC built-in functions? All right, let's take a look. Wow, we have to do MAVX2. Maybe that'll just fix things. Actually, you know what? I know why it's not any faster. We're not even up to the point where this is gonna improve things yet. Um, yeah, we could do MArch native too, but. <sighs> Guys, be patient, things take time. How come none of these talk about floating points? This is all about integers. Multiply packed integers. Gather packed single. Floating point instructions? Maybe it's these. Uh, v mol dq. Can this describe to me what they actually do? No. V. All right, wait, wait. Is this a type? VSI, V32QI. Intel Intrinsics Guide is the most useful for this. Right. Where does it tell me even what these types are? Is AVX2 not for floating point? Oh, I bet you it's that. Let's read, let's read, okay. AVX2 expands most integer commands. Oh, so we're just using normal AVX. Wow. AVX2 is only for integers. Did you guys know that? Three FMA instruction set. Oh. Oh. FMA three. CPUs with FMA3. Okay, well, an FMA is what we want. Let's try a VFM add. Oh, now we're talking. This looks good. Multiply pack single percent. Oh, yes. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. Add them to YMM3 mem. Oh, don't you love... When FMA is a fused multiply accumulate. 
Oh, M FMA4, but I don't think we actually have FMA4. I thought they removed FMA4. Don't use Strassen's algorithm. You're getting trolled if you do that. Let's check out the Ryzen and let's see, let's see what things my CPU supports. It's based on the Zen microarchitecture. Um, here, Zen three. Uh, does it say? Does it support FMA? Oh, here we go. They have single precision for performance. No, they only have it for the APUs, which I don't have. They don't have it for the processors. New instructions. Where's a list of all the instructions my CPU supports? Does it support FMA4? Oh, here I can watch this long YouTube video and learn about it. It was the best of instruction sets. It was the worst of instruction sets. Thanks, bro. Uh, I bet I'd actually learn something if I watch that video. Should we watch this video? Whoa. Look at all these people. They all know so much stuff. All right, here we go. Here's the Intel Intrinsics Guide. FMA. What are these types? Multiply single packed. Multiply the lower precision. We hate doubles. Right, here we go. Multiply the lower precision single floating point. I think a 256 sounds nice. FMA add sub and alternatively add and subtract. Okay, why would we want that? Multiply. Okay, this one looks good. MM256 FM add PS. So this does eight at once. It's a data type. Can I do this? Oh, we definitely don't want Ds. Is this allowed? Is it going to yell at me? It's going to yell at me. Unknown type. What do I have to include for this? IMM intrin. So that's eight. So let's make the block eight. And then we can replace this. Oh, wow. Well, now we really need a correctness check because I'm going to do this totally wrong. We can replace this with this. Oh, here. You found out what, what things my CPU supports? Oh. 
All right, cool. So it supports FMA3. I think that's the one we're using. Um, Wow, this is really hard, actually. Should we just move straight to the GPU? No, no. Are we gonna give up? No, never give up. Um, wow, well, all right, well, we learned something today. AVX2 is only about integers. We need FMA instructions. You're right, This whoever gave me this Intel link, thank you, this is the, really the best one. Um, we're doing this. And we're going to say temp equals, uh, okay, so it's am sub by plus y, uh, well, actually, yeah, by plus y divided by 8 um, times, N, well, we'll put the times N in here, uh, plus K. The stride can then go by that. Wow, this makes you appreciate NumPy, you know? We don't have an X anymore. Yo, do you guys remember when you were a kid and everything just felt real? It was just so real, you know? And now what do we have? Now the world makes sense. And the world making sense is all a bit sad. like this is like is this like aligned probably like not aligned you know by uh, plus This code's probably egregiously wrong, and that's why we're about to add a check. Always inline function. Requires target feature FMA. Oh, oh what is it? M native? MR equals native? Segmentation fault. Okay. Let's add a correctness check first. Um, Line 64, oh, good point. Uh. 
What can I link to? L blast. Or should we just have NumPy save the, uh, should we just save it from NumPy? We'll just read it. the syntax for F read. Come on, highlight for me. Useless shit. Here we go, now we don't have to link to blast anymore. Oh, sorry, your align didn't work. I think it's aligned. Yeah, it's that, well, we'll get there. I'll just throw that in a comment. Okay, we're back to seg faulting. Uh, let's use this before we try to go for the speed up and see if my matrix multiply is even correct which it's probably not. C sub y sub x equals is not equal to val sub y sub x. Say mismatch at not equal to f. Right, gonna... Well, it doesn't even work uh, because I think that we had to not, I think that we're assuming these matrices are not transposed, which is gonna make it even more painfully slow. But if NumPy's gotta deal with it, we gotta deal with it too. Ugh, this is so painful. Wait, that's really close. Is that wrong? I don't know. Make it even smaller while we while we practice our algorithm. Is that right? I, I don't know if that's right or wrong. Is that within error? I don't know. Looks okay. All right. Uh,
come on, it can't be off by more than one E5. That's getting crazy. Yeah, but now it's one E3. Well, I thought this was gonna be easy. Why is it wrong? It's both wrong and slow, the worst of both worlds. We'll settle for 1e4. Let's just try it a few times. Good enough. 1e4, that sounds good. This here is going to be slow because we didn't transpose the matrices. That should be equivalent to doing this. We'll assume the matrices are pre-transposed. All right, good. Cool. Start by transposing. Okay, good. Oh, we put the transpose outside? Yeah, we could do that, but let's make that block a little bigger, not that it matters. Um, let's go up to one and two four so we're actually getting the full speed. Uh, and this guy is gonna be one and two four. Okay. Wait, what? Nanometer says you need to run the C twice because memory is slow. Mm. I don't know about that. Okay, good enough. Uh, it, I mean, it is slow in the beginning, but... Mm, do you really want me to run it twice? Still, we're still off by several orders of magnitude and speed. We have perfectly transposed square matrices. If we can't make this fast, we'll have to, you know, give up. Hello, segmentation fault, okay. Let's figure out why we're getting a segmentation fault. Um, Oh, well first let's see, can we align this? Yeah, okay, good. Whoa, look, we made the Python faster by aligning it in C. I don't know how that's possible. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're so right. That thing's using all the threads. Oh, that's a scam. That's a scam. You know what, NumPy? Guess what? I'm giving you one thread. Yeah. Yeah, it's OMP num threads. Yeah, that's right. You don't get multiple threads anymore.
Okay, that's what it does with one thread. It's still pretty good. Let's confirm that it's actually only using one thread. There we go, just one little thread. I'm not dealing with multi-threading, I don't care about that. Okay, so one thread manages to get 136 gigaflops. That's really a pretty insane amount of gigaflops. Let's figure out what we did wrong. Oh, this whole thing needs to be divided by eight? This needs to incorporate BX. Oh, look at that. Aside for the fact that it's wrong, we get similar gigaflops. Now we just need to make it not wrong. Just comment that out, that's confusing me. We have a lot of gigaflops. Now what's now we just need to make it not wrong. Did I do this wrong? Okay, my block size is eight. These things are operating on 256 divided by 32 is eight. Um that should fuse multiply add TC sub y equals temp. And then we're going to work out what the theoretical maximum is for this processor. I mean, processors are a lot more complicated than GPUs. Uh, oh, I think that's right. Do that or something? No, we're just guessing. Okay, we shouldn't be guessing. Don't guess. Uh, let's just make a nift f. good until we try to go fast and then it's bad. So can everyone kind of visualize what this is doing? There's like blocks in the matrix. CPUs are bad GPUs. Well, we'll, we'll get to the, we'll get to the CPU in a minute. We'll get to the GPU in a minute. Uh, well, maybe we won't because Y plus Y, we kept the Y loop. We kept the K loop. Oh, well, we gotta do that, first of all. Uh, is there like an intrinsic for this?
Cat, does that work? Let's see if it's actually getting zeroed. Okay, good, it's actually getting zeroed. You don't need to rerun that every time. Okay, now it's just wrong, but it's wrong for a different reason. by plus y times n plus bx divided by 8 equals tc sub y. That seems right. Wow, look at all those gigaflops we're getting now. That's pretty good. There must be bugs because it's too fast. <coughs> um, let me first uh, change up this a little bit. to make it more. Matching. So it's really the same thing. We're just treating the whole thing as a big uh, single array instead of this indexed C++ magic. Uh, it's gonna complain, okay. So this is basically, I'm just, it's really the same thing. Uh, in C, when you have a two-dimensional array, it's just syntactic sugar around that. Oh, well, that's not really right. We can leave this as a two-dimensional array. So that works. Uh, we left this as a two-dimensional array because this is effectively the same thing as this if block is eight. Because each one of those is, a, is an eight. Uh... Okay, this would be good if it wasn't wrong. Oh, there's mm set zero, yeah. Uh, Bumby, that's off topic. Uh, we, we like staying on topic in these streams. Uh, to do a more cache-friendly matrix multiplier. Yeah, I mean, we can start cheating in a minute, but for now, we're trying to figure out what's wrong. Um, okay, we don't need to do plus x, because that's fine. This should just be stored. Yeah, one D and two D indexing are equal in performance. The problem is it's it was annoying because you can't uh, you can't really do a pointer cast. Uh, on a 2D array, and I, you know, I'm probably wrong. There probably is a way to, but I don't know it. Uh, well, somehow this is twice as fast as NumPy, so we definitely did something wrong. Using three source vector enough. A and B are multiplied, and the infinite precision intermediate results are adding to corresponding results in the third operand, in which the final results are rounded to the nearest. Uh, I don't understand what I did wrong. It's basically just that, right? Uh, no, hang on. Do we want plus y there? I think we want plus y there. 
No, maybe not. How does that not matter? That's even crazier. That stuff's right. It only works for block equals eight anyway. So if you want a block not equal to eight, you're out of luck. Um, isn't BM storing eight elements in a row in the variable? Well, yeah. Is there something wrong with that? It's pretty much the same as this, except we got rid of this loop because it's implied. No, it shouldn't be the column I don't think I, I think that my matrix is transposed no no it is transposed I transposed it because look look at this one yeah what I do wrong Oh, by the way, uh, the reason that the thing is different is probably because NumPy, I'm sure, is using FMA instructions. Okay, we know that stuff's right. This is, every single one of those is getting filled in. What about trying it by an eight by eight matrix with single numbers? Yeah, okay, all right, all right. You wanna, you wanna debug a bit? Let's debug. It's time for printfs. Yeah, I think it might be printf o'clock. Um, Guys, know I love printf o'clock. It's my favorite o'clock. pretty good, but I set them to whole numbers. How did it become floats? That can't be right. You can't multiply integers together and get floats. That's not how things work. But did I do something wrong? Equals I. Oh, sorry. All right, those look like good numbers. Now let's see what the matrices look like multiplied. Zeros. Well, I can't be right. Oh, because I did val. I don't want to do val. Sorry, I want to do c. All right, those look pretty good. Now let's try the fast algorithm and watch it fall. 
segmentation involved. Okay. Well, that tells us something in and of itself. Let's get more coffee, go to the bathroom, and solve the problem. Should we take a break and play Wonderwall on the guitar? That's the only question I have. Is it is it time for Wonderwall? I did move. I saw a great tweet that said, you know we're in a recession when George Hotz is downsizing apartments. Um, and it's true. It's true, boys. It's true. Uh, not enough of you subscribed. So, you know, now I live in the ghetto. That's a lie. I live in a beautiful apartment. Y'all know I'm rich. <laughs> Don't want anyone thinking I'm poor. Um, I know what we'll do. We'll use GDB. And we'll throw some G's on that bitch. All right, we got some G's. All right. Oh, look. Segmentation fault. Okay. Let's print BX. Print K. Print temp. Optimized out. Um, well, what did I do? That seems okay. How come it can't load zero? Is that really the line it broke on? Locals? Print P I Y. Is that even working? O zero. Good point. Good point. Wait. Wait. How does it work with O0, but it doesn't work with bros? Bros. <laughs> Wait, that's real stupid. This can't be, this is illegal. I'm gonna sue, I'm gonna sue. Wait, no, 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 that's illegal. I'm gonna sue Clang. <laughs> No, 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 I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna legitimately sue Clang. Do we have Valgrind? No, boys, we're suing Clang. I shouldn't need to do that. O1 is broken. O0, well, wait, I think it's wrong now. Is it wrong? Yeah, it's wrong. Okay, well, that's good to know. It doesn't seg fall, but it's wrong. So th this is still, we're not suing Clang just yet. Don't worry. Don't worry. It was probably already undefined behavior. And then once we define the behavior, it broke. So we're not suing Clang yet. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll keep the lawyers on standby. Um, but good, now we get an output and you can see that it's, it's wrong. Uh, wow. 
Okay, well, somehow it got like powers of two or something. That's kind of cool. That one's always zero. That just can't be right. Cause somehow we're gonna have to iterate through the other part of the matrix, right? Let's first comment this out. There's too many mammals here. It can't always be zero. We have to think about what we're doing and why. Why multiply by n and not x? Because it's like striding. <coughs> uh, is this algorithm just totally wrong? I think we might still need this actually. Oh no. I think we actually just still need that. I don't understand why it's seg faulted, but. It doesn't match. It might be wrong, but at least it's fast. I like your attitude, bro. Oh no, we're not thinking about this right at all. Oh, we're messing up like crazy. Okay. Oh, I wish I had a whiteboard so we can think about what we're actually doing here. We want to multiply these two together to get this one. Oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. It's totally wrong. Because we got to do the dot product. You see? Is that really the best way to do this? Yeah, I think it is. Like, we multiply all those together and we get one. Yeah. All right, well, we definitely need to access all of them. Wow, I, I missed when it was just fast. I just didn't write the right thing at all. We didn't think it through, and now we get what we deserve. Can store dev files on public NFS. Do you want me to push to GitHub? I can push it. in the gem branch if you want it. <sighs> okay, so it's a lie actually. Each one of these is only computing a single number. All right, bump, 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 bump. And then this one, we gotta figure out how to get the dot product. Is this really how we even wanna do this? All 
All right, let's read the Stack Overflow one. Let's see what it says. The problem is not cache. We're not even writing the right thing at all. Yeah, that's what I wrote. Basically. Trying to write general map model, but as you can see, we are failing badly because this one doesn't equal this one. <coughs> okay, um, let's write the stupid thing and then we'll figure out how to make it fast. So how do we extract from an MM an MM256? There's gotta be like a, it's got, there's probably a dot product instruction. Is my internet broken? Calculate the It's not, I don't know. Backdrop for a sec, all right. Someone used a microwave or something. Could be used for the upper and lower parts. Have broadcast load instruction. Access the things. These things are what? These things are like. Um, there's ways to like get the things out of here, right? You want to say like temp.a or something? Is that, is that right? Dot a. Vector of eight float. Oh, can I do this? All right. Let's just see if this is correct. That match this. All right, good, it matches now. Still seg faults when you try to go fast. And I don't know about that. Uh, all right, let's get rid of debug. and see if it works for the whole thing. Match, even with dfast. Except it's not faster. Tragic. It's not even faster. Oh, it is faster. All right, cool. All right, we, we, we got something to be a little bit faster. Um, is that really the algorithm we want to write, though? Like, we're going through those. I Still, like, doesn't seem right. And I guess this is we're we're getting a we're getting a plus eight speed up there. 
I'm not writing Strassens, okay? Get out of here. Get out of here, you're not right. NumPy's not using Strassens, right? Look at NumPy, look at how many G-flops they're getting. And then we get a pathetic amount of G-flops, right? I promise you NumPy's not using Strassens algorithm to multiply matrices. We're just not thinking fourth dimensionally. All right, what is a cache friendly code? Should, should, should we read this? Well, all right, so here's something that we can do. I don't think we actually need an outer loop and inner loop. Well, maybe we do, because it's cache friendly there. NumPy does use a third party blast, that's true. They didn't even write their own blast because that's so hard. All right, well, let's try to figure out why uh, O2 to, oh. Wait, boys, that's pretty good. 28 G-flops. Why is that seg faulting? How does that seg fault? What's wrong? There's a bug in Clang. I don't understand. That's pretty good. Yeah, right? Okay. Let's track down the segmentation fault. We're gonna sue Clang. Don't worry, by the end of this, we're suing Clang. Clang, get ready to be taken to the cleaners. pretty correct. What's failing? Uh, can we see the instructions? What is it? Layout asm? All right. V move apps racks info registers. All right. So there's racks. There's RSI. And I don't know what one means. I think that's like a multiplier and it's moving that into YMM2. Is the data not aligned? Oh, is this an unaligned thing? Oh, this is to bytes. Oh. All right, all right, all right, all right. You know what? It's a pebcac, boys. It's a pebcac, don't worry. Oh, it's fast now. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we're not suing Clang, don't worry. It was, it was a pebcac. It was a pebcac. You guys know about pebcacs? All right, good. Um, yeah, always assume, you know, that you're being a dumbass and not other people, you know? You can go around and spend your whole life talking about how you want to sue people and blame other people for your lot in life. But the truth is, you have nobody to blame but yourself, no matter what's wrong. No, and that's real advice. You know what I say? All advice is bullshit. If there's one piece of advice, here's my piece of advice. It is always your fault, right? Even if like, oh, it's not my fault, it's not my fault. All right, you can go be a little bitch about that, but like... Or you can go through life assuming that everything's your fault. And then, you know, everything wrong with the world is your fault. I'm like, but it's not, it's not. Don't worry, it's these people. If these people all weren't so terrible. No, 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 no. It's a terrible way to go through life. All right. All right, that's pretty good. That's a good number of G-flops, boys. Let's crank this back up to 496. Why is that so slow again? Oh, because we only did, okay. 2048, that seems like a good compromise. That's good. Uh, 2048. Mm, all right, all right, all right. Uh, does the second one matter? Okay, we're only like a factor of five off NumPy now. <coughs> All right, 
You want to try 03? I'm telling you, more than 02 really never makes a difference, but we can try it. No, it's the same. Well, but that was a little faster. Well, yeah, but that was a little faster when I used 02, all right? Um, don't worry, we don't need to sue Clang. The problem was that my alignment was bytes. I didn't realize that this was bytes. I thought it was number of floats. You can sometimes get major speed ups by manually unrolling loops. Yeah, if your compiler is from the 90s, bro. Do you have a compiler from the 90s? All right, let's try to figure some stuff out. So my CPU is running at megahertz. And somehow NumPy is achieving this many G flops. Single core NumPy. So that's 2.2 gigahertz. It looks like it can do 64, uh, well, it's doing 32 F max per cycle. Flops per cycle. Thirty-two FMAs. So this is doing eight. So it must be able to do four of those at once. My CPU should be around. Not sure about that. Oh, I just heard the fan spin up. Oh, okay, fine. It's faster. Yeah, it's just throttling down some of the course. Okay, well, that's good to know. Thank you, thank you for catching that bug. I appreciate you. Uh, we're getting 4.49, um, okay, so that's actually probably only 16 FMAs per cycle. That seems more right. Does it? I don't know. I'm just saying that because it's actually right. It's better to disable any power management when benchmarking compute. Now, I'm not really worried about that. Where it should be like, See if we can find stuff about the Zen 2 microarchitecture. Uh, all right, that's a load store system. Here we go. FAD. All right, so it looks like they have two FMAs, which would make sense. So if we look here, so this is this is the diagram of the uh, of the Zen two microarchitecture. You can see that we have two FMAs here in the floating point unit, and I assume that says thirty two bytes. So that's eight wide. Yeah. Yeah, 
right? That makes sense. Two 8x wide FMAs. So that's 16 FMAs. That's 32 flops per cycle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know how to disable my performance governors. Don't worry, they're not a problem. Um, and then I'm gonna forget to turn it back on. I'm gonna get my electric bill next month and Alex is gonna be like, George, electricity is very expensive. Uh, and I'll be like, I know, I know, but the, the Twitchy has had me turn off my performance governors on my CPU and I haven't rebooted the computer in a month. Um, okay, so good. We're achieving the maximum. Whoa, but are you telling me I can do fads fast as well? I love what it matches. Green, that's right, that's right. We care about the environment on this channel. We're an eco-friendly channel. How are we doing on viewers? Is this the kind of content you all want to see? Is my NumPy offloading to GPU? Oh, good. Oh, good. This is the content people want to see. Um, no, my NumPy is not offloading to GPU. Don't worry. Like, we did the math. It makes sense. All right. So we have to, it matches the mic, NumPy matches the microarchitecture perfectly. If you're getting three G flops with gem.py, I think you uh, link to some, I think your NumPy is weird. You wanna see, I don't, that, you're, you're, I don't know what you wanna see, bro. So for some reason, something about this is slow. Maybe this is fast and then this is slow? Possible we have cache coherency issues. It shouldn't matter if I make block bigger. The algorithm should still be correct if we make this. Well, it's a little faster, but. It's not that. We're, we're, we're still 5x off from the uh, theoretical performance. There's got to be one instruction for this. No, 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 no. It doesn't need more assembler, right? That's called premature optimization. Don't do it. Where was that good page from before with the good intel things? I like listed all of them, this one. 
Uh, okay, there's probably an AVX2 instruction here. What is this though? No. Where's the one that... We wanna, basically instead of having this loop here, we wanna write that as one thing. It's gotta be some kind of like... The SSE instructions? No, what is SSE? I don't even know. Wow, AVX512 is full of bullshit. Uh, not any of those. We're looking for something that has an output of a float and an input of a MM256 and then it adds them all up. How is that void? Zero all the contents? Wow, that's pretty powerful. Oh, I think I know something we can do to make it faster too. Copy the lower single precision. No, it can't be that. Is it horizontal add? Is this it? And horizontal pairs, no, 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 no. Anything that has an output of that is wrong. It needs to have an output of, we want it, we want it to turn into a single float. But there might be another way to do this. So, is this really the most cache coherent way to write this? I think I actually might want to put the K outside. Basically, we want to load all. This is iterating through a lot of stuff that's like big and strided. So I think we want to put the K outside this loop. Yeah. Let's try it on the not fast one first. I, I think I actually just wrote this thing entirely wrong. I, I think that the thing I did that, that supposedly gave me cache coherency actually didn't give me cache coherency at all. Okay. Um, let's throw D debug. Put block back to eight. I think we want to put the K outside. And then here we'll say All right, let's think about what we're doing here. We're accessing the same thing over and over again. I'm just imagining, like, I'm imagining it like lit up and it's like a cross like this. Uh, yeah, this, this K needs to go outside of this. Is that allowed, by the way? Put this out here. Does it work? Hmm, I think there's some answer. Okay, now we're getting 16 gigaflops from the slow one. That's without D fast. By the way, 
I think if we're doing FMAs, we can uh, relax, we can make it a lot more precise. But all right, so you see what we changed there? I, I wrote the wrong thing before. We, we want this K loop to be outside uh, of this. It doesn't matter if our block size is one, but it matters when our block size gets bigger. So let's try a block size of like 32 and see what we get. We really want this to fit in registers. 32 was too large. 32 is way too large. I regret that. Let's work out how many registers we have and make sure we're actually uh, doing this right. Okay, so we're using, a, those are AVX2 registers that it uses. I could try four as well. You want to try four? Oh, look at that. Oh, should we try two? Is two even faster? No, two is slower. Okay, four. Turns out four is the magic number for the slow algorithm. <coughs> yeah, four times four is 16. So yeah, this is this is this is probably using registers and it's probably actually pretty fast. Um, I wonder if those loops are getting unrolled. Do you want to take a look? Uh, whoa! Is it already turning things into? It's already, look, it's already using vmulps. Which is that? Multiply. All right, it's using xmm. It's not managing to use ymm. Wait a second. Shouldn't it use YMM if I set block equal to eight? Well, now it's using YMM, but YMM manages to be slower. If I set block equal to four, it uses XMM. Wow, Clang's really good. So we're looking here, and I don't know why it's not. Uh, is there an intrinsic for fused multiply accumulate in GCC? What's FMAF? I think maybe we can do this. works, but it's slower. See that loop? I wish it would, I wish this thing would indent my code for me. Is that like a nice like object dump pretty format? Um, object dump lines pretty. So like a Like a nice way to. Does Object Dump have a thing for this? Oh, you need fast math to tell GCC that the add mall order doesn't matter. We love fast. It's not faster.
Oh, but you're telling me if I, uh, then I don't need to use the built-in? Oh, here we go. Okay, look, it's using FMAD. It's using FMAD. All right, great. So we're getting 36 GFLOPs with that, and I don't even need to write anything special. Man, I love optimizers. Uh, well, I don't know, let's just put this back to eight and see. Slower still. Okay, we must be getting stalls somewhere because we're back to YMMs now. It must be using RAM. For some reason that's not fitting in registers, but this one did. Uh, by the way, here. So you'll see if I used fast math, I'm gonna include this in the, uh, just to show you the difference. Thank you, thank you for, oh, visualize jumps extended color. Oh, only with new bin utils. Should we compile bin utils? Should we spend an hour doing that? Uh, okay, but you'll see. Okay, if we compile without fast math. It's a little bit slower, and when we look at this, you can see that it's doing an FVMolPS and VAddPS. It's doing them separate. And then I don't know what a VBroadcast SS is. Let's Google it. Load floating points as one. Oh, it's loading a single thing and putting it in there? Okay, that's nice. Um, this JNE is back to here, so this is the loop here. That's the inner loop. It's doing inserts and broadcasts and stuff. I don't know anything about that. Um, but you'll see when we switch to fast math, it's not only a little bit faster, we get obj dump here, and it's a VFM ad. I don't understand broadcast, I guess. Wait, is this a single float that it's reading? Oh, broadcast SS must be a store to all locations using write mask K1. See if it's any different with O3. I don't think O3 does anything. Whoa! Okay, O3 is faster. Let's see why. Oh, look, it's unrolling the loops and using YMMs. Uh, let's set block equal to eight. Oh, I was hoping that was gonna work. Okay, we're getting a lot of NumPy's performance. Yeah, O3 did something. Um, only change it made there. So Uh, 50 G flops. Okay, this is unrolling the loop into something crazy. It's spending a lot of time moving things. I don't trust it.
Hmm. Okay. 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 Here's a thought. Load. Could use a prefetch instruction. Uh, what's that? You think this is too early? No, I bet this is right. Because we'll, we'll do it in registers if we have to. BK for you. Um, okay, okay, segmentation fall, that's fine. Something's wrong here because this shouldn't go to N. Uh, they out of the sky are. Segmentation fault, core dot. Yeah, because, okay, this isn't right. This should be block as well. But then that's, that doesn't seem right either. Uh, what did I write wrong? Maybe let's just try it. Still side fault. BY, BX, uh, Y sub K. No, it couldn't go to K. <sighs> Never mind. This is in the wrong place.
is not initialized. Okay, the problem is we'd have to put the load in here. Uh, and then this would be the compute, right? We'd have to put the load inside the K loop, um, which we probably actually don't want to do. So. All right, let's go back to trying to use the intrinsics. So if we want to use the intrinsics, um, first off, my fast one's actually slower now. Move this guy out here. Uh, let's make this this thing. No, actually, let's put it out there. Okay, and we have to make sure um, for fast, we have to make block equal to eight. Well, actually, we don't. We don't, we just have to be careful. Uh, y should go to block, but k should go to eight. And should this one be eight? I might just be able to get it with this. And sometimes if you just like write the right thing, the optimizer will just uh, will just be your friend and work for you. Um, where did that assert go? So really what we want is block X. To be eight. How is that slower? I don't know. But we have to assert because uh, then this is block Y. Um, can I put an assert out here? allowed. Cool. Let's see if that assert actually fails. If I, oh, I didn't define fast. It probably doesn't work. I mean, you can't put an assert out in the thingy because that's bad. Undeclared identifier block. Yeah, because it's block y, block x. Y, block X. No, well, this algorithm's not even right, so. Um, I think we actually change this back to K plus plus. And then the loop we can get rid of is this block X loop? No, no, that's not right. It does need to be K plus equals eight. Um, but you see, so so here, like uh, block x is the implied dimension. I still have hard coded eights in two of the loops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I we'll, we'll we'll deal with the hard coded eights in a minute. Um, okay. Well, that one's pretty fast, but it won't be as fast as this one because this one we're gonna we're gonna write by hand. We're gonna design it to be fast. It was designed to be fast. Um, get rid of that temp. And so this will just be able to say this. 
Uh, how does that even work? Okay, we, we should just be able to say this. Divided by eight equals CM equals TC sub Y. That's going to be fast. We might still need that one. I think we still need that one. Um, this one we say temp sub y. Uh, and then we don't need this anymore. Something like that. I have one too many. Use undeclared identifier tempo because it's TC. Assertion fail block x equals eight. Looks like I'm gonna make block x equal eight. Okay, it's fast but wrong. Something like this is right though. Oh, set TC to zero, you're right, I don't set TC to zero. Still wrong. I don't really understand what this aid is. Is this the same algorithm as this? by eight, TC supply, we store it there. Wrong, what's wrong? Do I need to cast? No. I mean, it's fast, but it's wrong. So, all right, all right, let's go back to ddbuck. Something isn't looking very dot producty here. We used to have to do this weird dot product, and we don't do that anymore. So let's think about why that is. Yeah, that's the problem. This isn't right. No, no, they don't know. The A and the BM are right. Um, this isn't actually what I want to compute. Let's think about what I want to compute. See, I want to like, I'm multiplying those two, and then I want to like stick it in one. Uh, I, I had that code before. Let's 
think about why that doesn't work in a minute, but. Oh. Yeah, so this really isn't right. No, I don't need TCY plus X. No, it's not that. Um, TC just didn't have in it what I thought it had in it. We have to accumulate over the K dimension. So like this will work if we do this. It's just incredibly stupid, I think. We bring the dot product shit back. All right. If we like things really slow, this is going to be really slow. A good way to think about it. Yeah, see, that's the right answer now. It's just very slow. Wait, it's not that slow. It is the right answer. But no, this is not what we want. Like, right now, we're storing these for way too long. Yeah, so I have an idea once we fix this conceptually down here, we'll, uh, we'll fix it up top as well. Try moving this out here. No, it's just it's just like not right. Because right now we're storing these all, and then we're dot producting them at the bottom. We can definitely that is faster. <sighs> okay. What 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 am I doing wrong? What, what do I actually want here? Raven Dust, thank you for gifting subs. Um We want this thing at the end to be equal to like the whole matrix product. Oh, I think that this is the wrong, like axis. Maybe the untransposed one is actually faster. No, can't be. Okay, this times this is that. I want to collapse that into one number. 
And they're not really a good way. Level two hype train. Boys, it's not even working. We're getting a pathetic number of G flops. We gotta get the G flops up. Okay. Sorry, I, I, I can't get into the hype train right now. Don't even like, it's not, I don't deserve it. Um. X is not the implied them. Like, there's no way this fits in registers. We can't have that many. How many registers do we have? That's a good question. Number of YMM registers. 16 YMM registers. Oh, well, that's why four is the fastest. 16 YMM registers. So that should be able to keep it in registers. Uh, that was a stupid assertion. Maybe this is right. Okay, is that the fastest we've gotten so far? Okay, 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 50 G flops. No, I've seen this before though. This isn't actually faster. I don't know how to go faster than that though. That actually might be like the best we can do. It's only bringing the loads out there is going to help. There's no FMA 3-4. No, that's not the problem. I, I don't know what we're doing wrong now. My block sizes are correct, and I understand why that's the fastest. Funny enough, it's the same algorithm, so it's the same speed. I, like the Clang, uh, the Clang optimizer just basically wrote this. Um, I'm not sure there's a better way to do this. We could do the dot product every time. Like I could do the dot product here and then accumulate in the dot product. But that probably isn't what I want to do. All right, shall we Google? This is vector matrix multiplication. Wow, an anonymous gifter gifted five subs. Thank you. Thank you, I appreciate you. All right, let's take a look at option up and see what we're actually getting. Ooh, we got an option. Where's the core loop? We have XORs. Oh, that must be zero. Okay, the core loop is here and we're, no. We're jumping back here. Okay, so this is the core loop here. FM add, move APS. Um, would it be used to use a 1D array? No, that's not the problem. This stuff should all be fine. Like it should all be in some really Tight cache. We're using FMAD on YMM instructions. Don't understand why I'm not getting the NumPy performance. I think this is right, though. I don't think it's, like I don't think I'm doing anything obviously wrong now.
could move the loads out. Maybe it's possible that I need another loop for even more cache locality. Uh, let's try it with a slightly smaller matrix and see what I get. Uh, same G flops. Is it cache misses that are killing me? What's going on? Is my store thing dumb? By the way, what does it actually use for that? I know it has some fast thing to do it. Can I utilize the second FMA unit? What do you mean? You think you get to you think you get to use it? Gives you 20%. 20% slower? That's all I got. So I'll notice that it's the same thing with and without D fast. Okay, that manages to make it slower on my computer. You don't get to use the second FMA unit. That's not how it works. By the way, optimizers are incredible. Something we can try to do. Do you want to write it in assembly? If you issue a second FMA instruction using different regs, but yeah, don't you think that's, well, what do you mean by different regs? That doesn't matter. This stuff's all relabeled like crazy inside the chip. Um, yeah, maybe, okay, hang on, hang on. Let's try this. Aha! Look at that! There we go! See that? Okay, okay. So we only have 16 of these registers, so we gotta be careful. Look, it's faster now. The compile. The, wow, the optimizer is doing the exact same thing. Okay, we're at 91 G flops. That's pretty good. D1 G flops. I know it's not a multiple, but uh, okay. Mm, yeah, no, NumPy is more. NumPy is a hundred and three. Uh, sorry, 136. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good though. That's good progress. And you'll, you'll see why when we look at it in option up, you'll see. Ah, look at that. See what's not doing any loads? What is doing? It is doing these loads, but it's not doing any stores. It's managing to keep it all in registers. We're not getting any spillover. Oh, level three hype train. All right, all right. Um, wait. Wait, 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 it's using XMMs? Why is it using XMMs? If I can figure out why it's using XMMs, we can get to the bottom of the problem. This is all XMMs. Why is there any XMMs?
I just heard my fan spin up. Okay, this is the best one we got so far. I'm happy that we can get rid of O3. I never trusted O3. I don't trust people who trust O3. getting XMMs and not YMMs. Is this doing some crazy shit? Mads are okay. The Smads are all fast. Yeah, this is the core loop here now. And it's YMMs. Is that a store? Why are you doing stores? Is that a load or a store? I can't even tell. I mean it's gotta be a load, right? V move apps. From this to that, what? It's storing that? I don't understand this. No, that must be a load. DFAST uses YMM. Okay. This, this stuff must be a load. So it loads in 2 and 13, and it fmads them. And then it loads in 14, it already has 10 somehow, which I don't totally understand. Okay. Well, something here we can note. This here can be moved outside this loop. It's just the same thing every time, right? Air dryer was killing the Wi-Fi. Um, I mean, we need to run that wire. We need to run the wire. Yeah. Okay. Um, so here's an interesting thing to note. We should be able, why do I even have block Y? Have we tried this? No, worse. Because then we have cash coherency issues. Yeah, hair dryer is killing the Wi Fi.
Hmm. Oh, okay. And now you get to Y. Okay, this might be hard to make faster. This might be hard to make faster without reordering the matrices. Without first doing like a, like a reorder. Because you can look at this and you can be like, wow, well, that's kind of bad. Um, I don't understand why it's faster with a bigger block Y. I mean, we can try this. No. All right, 90 is the most we get. No, it was the the hair dryer was killing the Wi-Fi. That's the outer loop. The outer loop looks kind of crap. How are we doing on viewers? That's the main loop there. We're not managing to saturate the FM ants. 930, okay, okay. Reorder the matrix to eight by two blocks. Yeah, I mean, we could do that. I guess I just don't really understand how this isn't saturating. This is block X equals two. How is that with block X equals two? Why are we doing four loads? That's not right. Man, something's hacking, bro. The optimizer's just doing this. It's pre-computing the strides. Or maybe now we need to pre-fetch the second part. There's one, two, three, four, five, six loads in here. How are there six loads? I don't trust the compiler. but I trust myself more. That's pretty good, 90 gigaflops. Should we be satisfied? No, because I've seen NumPy do, I've seen NumPy, it's faster. We're only satisfied when we can get the speed of NumPy. One, two, three, four, five. How is it doing? Six is such an odd number. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I understand why it's six. It's six because it's unrolling. It's unrolling one iteration of this. So the six are one, and then block X is two, two, three, one, two, three. Is that really fast? Hmm. 
We must be hitting cash stalls. How do I profile this kind of stuff? What's up? Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, what's up? I'm ruining everything. Well, the twitchies are sad when the, the, the Wi-Fi drops. Perf not found. You may need to install Linux tools generic. I definitely don't want to install anything to do with the cloud because I don't trust it. Let's try this. I've never used this before. Wait, what? I installed it. Perf, but it's complex. Okay, okay, we have something. Um, perf. Record, I don't trust this at all. Error. <sighs> Consider adjusting four. I, I just I, I, uh, all right all right Valgrind looks easier to use using its data for the LL simulation Okay, well, D refs, D misses. Oh, that's a lot of misses. Oh, um, does this work? Does not like control C. Decrease matrix size. No, uh, that's not the problem. Yeah, like no wonder these are cash misses. We might need another loop. Like we might, we probably need one loop for every cash size. Die, Valgrind. Oh yeah, look at how much less misses it had. So much less misses. Oh, S Gem Colonel Haswell. Oh wow. Should we read the S Gem Colonel Haswell?
something I don't totally understand. Why does why is block Y even needed? Block Y does not seem useful. There's nothing here that's sped up with block Y. But yet, when I get rid of block Y, I regret trying to use perf. When I get rid of block Y, it's worse. Um, that's decent. There's like a way to do a reverse search with like one line. Oh. Doesn't that look fast? That looks very fast. Valgrind kind of emulates. Just, just look at that. That loop looks fast. Problem is, these things are cache misses a lot of the time. Uh, all right, I'm going to clean a bunch of stuff up. I don't understand why we need block Y. We can get rid of stupid block Y, because block Y is for idiots. And do we look like idiots? No, we're not idiots. And we're going to get rid of not fast, because everything's fast. We're going to add back block Y. No. Well, I don't think we care at all about block Y. I think we got duped. We got duped, boys. We got duped. We're going to make this fast. It's going to be so fast. You're going to be like, wow, it's so fast. Uh, get rid of the Y's. No more Y. Y doesn't exist anymore. It's just Y times N. That Y can die. Now that we only have one block, we'll just call it block again. Yeah, X is fine. Now. Now the problem is just cache. Look at it, it looks so fast. That looks like it's gotta be blazingly fast. Look at that code. It's like short and it looks fast. Uh, but the problem is these things are spaced out a lot.
Look how fast it looks now. It looks fast on the thing. It loads one thing. And it map malls them. D1 misses. What's LLD miss? What's an LLD miss? So the D1 misses is too high. We do have to remember that we had it faster before. I wish we could do 16 here, but if we do 16, there's no longer, they should have put 17 registers. Why didn't they put 17? Why'd they cheap out? So like, look, because now, no, it's not it. Oh, it's not even like the optimizer is just destroying everything now. Is it a multiple of 12? Not a multiple of 12. Pravad, welcome. Welcome to the new people. Welcome to my stream. We're trying to make a matrix multiply fast. We had it at 90 gigaflops, then we deleted stuff, and now it's back down to 50. Um, but it looks fast, right? Doesn't that code look fast? Don't you just say like, wow, that code looks fast it's unrolling all the block x stuff but the problem with the block x stuff is yeah maybe that whole thing doesn't fit in a cache line think about what this is doing let me have racks up here racks is uh RDX is is K. I don't think I think that four is free, so I don't think that takes anything. Oh man, I hate Cisk though. Like look that's look at that. This is gonna be slow. Uh can we load the whole line? Like we're iterating through that entire line in BM. AM is the only thing that changes. That should be fine though. And then we store it. Why is this not fast? Probably need one more loop somewhere to deal with some cache. Let's think about how big this is. Okay, if n is 2048, then this is eight megabytes. Let's take a look at my caches and see. So I have a Ryzen 5950X. We're gonna look at my cache sizes. We have one megabyte of L1. L1, 8 MB L2, and 64 MB L3. Think about what we're iterating through there. We're multiplying that by N uh, is it the AMs that's killing me? I, I wish I could write things like this and just like no, not think that the optimizer is going to crush me, which it probably will. And this is probably going to be like insanely fast for some reason. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's good to know. That's still slow. See if it actually looks the same. No, it turned into VF add PSs. Not multiplies anymore. 
because it like knows about ones or something. There we go. Now, now you can't optimize. Yeah, yeah. Take that. Take that. You can't multiply by one anymore. Okay. Now we're back to VFM ads. Okay. So even when I hard code, I'm not using the A matrix anymore. Even when I hard code the A matrix, I'm still not getting the same number of G flops as NumPy. But we still have that same kernel of FM ads. So it must be that these things are cache missing. How do I prefetch? Because we know that we're fetching the entire K line and then this. See, really what I want to do is move that X to there. Oh, great, 3D now, that looks great. Um, Built-in prefetch. Prefetch is memory from adder. Can we think about, let's think about our access patterns for a minute. So we're accessing eight lines from BM, but this should all be contiguous. Let's work out how much we're accessing. Okay, so we have K, and K is equal to N, and then we're accessing block X lines. What up? Sorry, that was dumb. Uh, it's two oh four eight times eight. So this is one six three eight four. The L one is one megabyte, bro. So we're accessing a coherent group from that. Yeah. Built-in prefetch. How does this work? And that's what that simplifies to with those both being zero? Tell it on length, do I not? R, W, and locality. The default value is three. The default value of R, W is... No, it's not using L2. This isn't the problem. It's it's L one's just not fast enough. It, it's it's not it, it's cache blocking. Sometimes it's not being told to prefetch these things. Wait, and does that even that might not even be right? Did I multiply that by four? No, I have to multiply it by four. Okay, so it's actually sixty. 65 kilobytes. Um,
correct. Uh, sorry, dude. Correct, but it's slower. We don't actually want to make a copy, we just want to prefetch all that. out because we don't use it. At least that shouldn't have many cache misses. It is making a useless copy. Forgot float size? Where did I forget float size? No, I didn't. Like it's correct. You don't have a thousand registers. It's prefetch for registers. No, prefetch is for cache. I can try telling it to prefetch. Is the problem outside this loop entirely? Let's think about. Okay. So let's think about what this is actually going to do. Plus block X. No, we're, we're chomping through this very coherently. How is that still slow? I literally don't know how to get it fast. Like, how is that slow? There's that middle loop. That stuff has to be cache coherent now. There's no way to get better than being an L1, is there? Oh, you're saying I forgot size of float there? Yeah, well, I mean, I wrote it. Did I actually call mem copy? It calls mem copy. As a test to make bi, yeah, but I, I fear that if I make that a const, if I do that. Wait. No. How is that slower? How is there any, how is it at all possible that that's slower than that? I don't get it. That doesn't make any sense, right? don't understand. I don't really understand how to make it faster than this. <laughs> All right. 
right, what is this? This maybe has to do with coalescing? We have to coalesce our memory accesses or something? Should we do like a pre-transpose? Okay. Let's pretend we had it transposed. So if we had it transposed, this would just look like this. We could put k over 8 plus x. No. k plus x. Okay, if that's not fast, that's in order now. I'll even put this up here so it's the same every time. If that's only giving me 77 gigaflops, how? It's literally in order. Look at this loop. That loop looks fast as shit. Alright, for fun. Same. That loop looks so lightning fast. What's faster than that? The only thing I could think that could possibly be faster is if I use more registers. Why didn't they put 17? Why did they put 16? Okay, 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 I have an idea. SGEM has well. Open blast GitHub. Ninety percent of MKL in the eight thread speed. Kernel sixteen by six. Wow. Wow, these people have really thought about this stuff. Multiply ty by ty. Okay. I mean, the problem is that's probably if that doesn't get optimized. Oh, oh but that's getting optimized. It's it's just storing the same thing. Wait, no, it's not. Wait, what? Okay, I guess the I guess the optimizer doesn't optimize that. There you go. Well, yeah, okay. Great. So we found out how to get the same performance. Uh, no, actually, it's just, just to be faster. <laughs> we multiply the same two numbers and can't even make it as fast. Oh. All right, we're gonna we're gonna take a we're gonna take a short break. Uh, give me give me ten minutes, and then uh, we'll be back. Uh, and we're gonna we're gonna do it. <laughs> we're gonna do it. We found out at least how to get the same performance when we literally multiply the same two fucking numbers over and over again. You like multiplying the same numbers? Good. I got your performance. You want to multiply different numbers? Oh wow, that's too bad. No, it doesn't even work if the two matrices are the same. It works if every value in the matrix is the same. Uh, all right. We will be back in.
Yo. I saw, I searched Twitter and some guys like George is giving a lesson on matrix multiplication on Adderall. Look, guys. I, I you know, I, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get a 10 panel. I'm just going to get one of those 10 panel drug tests from, can I, can I buy, let's, let's, uh, let's take a look. Can I, can I buy a drug test? Five panel, easy, okay. Uh, so this is, um, I gotta, gotta piss on it. All right, cool. Uh, number one bestseller in home multi-use drug test. Uh, no, 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 no. This is, here's my answer to the, the haters, man. Here's my answer to the haters. You know what? And I'll explain what it is. Uh, cool. Uh, it will be here tomorrow. Um, hopefully you guys know that Adderall is amphetamine. Uh, and we are going to, uh, take this drug test. It might say THC. It might. Um, oh, you've seen other YouTubers do this before for steroids. And let me explain what it is. I, I think and it's interesting that you say that because I think I know what it is. You have people out there without skills, right? And they want to come up with a narrative that preserves their ego. Uh, while, right, they basically like, okay, they see a guy on, on YouTube or Twitch with skills or with muscles, it's the same idea. And they, they want something in their head to preserve why they're not like that, right? Oh, that guy's using steroids, that guy's using Adderall. But the truth is, that guy hits the gym more than you do. And that's the hard thing. That's the thing that you don't want to admit, right? It's always, always, oh, this guy is cheating in some way, right? Instead of because it preserves your ego. But in reality, your ego should be crushed. That guy hits the gym more than you do. That guy works harder than you. That guy hustles harder than you. And that's why he's got big muscles and you don't. Not because he's using steroids. That's right. So you all can see me take a drug test on next stream. <laughs> Um, no, I, let's, you're gonna, let's, let me, uh, how do I reopen that tab? There's like a way to just quickly reopen a tab, right? Uh, we can go through here. Uh, marijuana, when was the last time I smoked? Maybe like two weeks ago. So maybe I'll test positive for that. Opiates, years ago. Cocaine, probably 10 years ago. Uh, amphetamine, probably a year ago. And benzodiazepines, like twice in my life. Uh, I got Valium script for my jaw uh, when I was 24. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna, can, can I, like, I, we'll we'll come up with some way to make sure you guys know that like I, I'm not I'm not I didn't, I didn't bring a fake uh, fake bag of piss. We will show the piss on stream. We will not show the dick on stream. That gets you banned from Twitch. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, <laughs> okay. So I guess I don't really understand why that one is fast and then that one is slow. Uh, pass this. So what if my ball shriveled up? Who gives a fuck? You ever seen a girl look at a guy and be like, damn girl, he's got the biggest nuts. I don't understand. I don't understand why this is slow. I don't understand why that, how that can possibly be giving me worse performance. Let's take a look at our microarchitecture diagram again. What happened to that nice diagram we had? And we'll try to figure it out. This one? 
Oh, it's Zen 3. Oh, where's that nice diagram I had? CPU cores. And that is how... Great, bro. What happened to that diagram I had for the Zen 2 one? Oh, here. We only have a diagram for Zen 2. Zen 2. They reduced the FMA latency, but they didn't increase them. Whoa, DDR5 is coming, boys. DDR5 is coming. All right. Here's the load store unit. No, M protect is not gonna do anything. Are you saying it's doing some like cash right back? It's like worried about that? No. I can't imagine that. I'm accessing the same block over and over again. Okay, let's try something really stupid. What if I do that? Um, that got optimized? How does that get optimized, but this doesn't? I do that. I assume that's actually preloading it. Yeah, it's already in a register, so it's not a it's preloaded. If we do that. Wait, how are we getting that? Oh, it must not be doing K or something. I don't trust any of this. How is this not fast? run it 16 times or that won't answer the question. It's gotta be in cash. 
I set block x to 4. Segmentation fault. I don't really understand why, but segmentation fault. Seventy-four G flops per second. It was literally faster before. Like, how do I debug this? That looks very fast to me. It's stomping through memory in an incredibly coherent way. I'm not getting any answers here. Okay, those are 32-byte lines in the L1 cache. Oh, Wait, what, why did it say the L1 cache was... Oh! The L1 cache is only 32 kilobytes. Aha! Okay, okay, this is the total chip L1. L1 cache is 32 KB. Okay, okay. Fine. Now it's getting fast. It was L it was L1 missing. And it was having to prefetch that memory every time. Aha, uh -huh. okay, okay, okay. All right, now let's start adding stuff back in. Let's start with adding that. And it's still fast, okay, good. Um, let's go to that, is that fast still? No, that's not fast, but let's actually make sure we're getting the right answer. That's giving us the right answer. Um, That's slow again. Okay, one and two four by one and two four. So our line now is six, is eight. We might not want our line to be eight. Um, eight times one and two four times four is exactly the size of L one cache. I don't know, let's just make it 768 or something, just so we're under L1 cache size. Uh, let's make sure we're still getting, yeah, okay, we're still getting a high speed. That makes it slow, but does this make it slow? Only sort of. No, don't worry about the other processes. This isn't context switching. All right, does my out of order matter? No, my out of order doesn't matter. Well, my out of order might only not matter because of uh This should give the right answer. Okay, it does. Um Remember 
a time we had 90 gigaflops. That was pretty good. You want to just uh, check out that one and give up? fast. It's prefetching that whole line into L1. But now this one's not being prefetched. Uh, GCC prefetch intrinsic. That's fast, okay. So this is no problem. We just need to figure out how to make this. Now it's loading all of BL into L1. The problem is when we're here, it can't compute. It must just not be able to, to unroll this and prefetch it. It's interesting that only the inner matrix seems to matter. Okay, so for people who just showed up, we're trying to do a fast matrix multiply and you can see that NumPy is getting 129 gigaflops. So we can get the same performance, but only if we're accessing the same block. Let's just do that and see what it does. That's slow now. Hmm. Yeah, so it's not it's not prefetching the RAM, okay. It must yeah, okay, so this, uh, this should all be in L1 cache. Um, this should all be in registers. Uh, let's think for a quick second about L2. I don't think it matters, but... No, it shouldn't matter. It should all be fast enough that it doesn't matter. Eight way, 64 bits per line. 
Oh. Well, it's an interesting thought. We might not. The lines aren't the problem, because if the lines were the problem, then that would be... If the problem was fetching from L1, then that would be the problem. The problem is it's just not... Uh... Well, here's an idea. Okay, what if we get rid of the BX out here? Okay, then we get speed. So it's not even the it's not even the incoherency of the order. It's actually just not fetching that line. Like the 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 order is not. You can see here we're we're like striding through this thing like crazy. But the problem is actually when I add in bx. So I don't know why the prefetch engine. Oh. Okay, I don't think it's unrolling enough to realize that it has to get the next. The problem is it's not a, we can do like plus one there and maybe that'll fix it. Where's my prefetching transact? I forget what it is here. Built in prefetch. Mm, useless. If actually even does anything. Um, basically, okay, the, the problem is that the prefetcher is not capable of rolling out to this. What's the width of those lines? What's the width of a memory read? Two from L2, 32 bit, 32 bytes, two from L2. I don't understand, why is it 64 bits per line, yet all these things are 32 bytes? Uh, yeah, okay, so if you want to do that, just run the Python thing first. The Python thing will generate that for you. Where'd my prefetch go? Um, okay, I have an idea. What if we make this coherent? Let's say I did the swizzle. So let's try that. Wrong and not really faster. I don't understand why that's not really faster. That looks very fast to me. So why is it wrong right now? Somehow those things aren't ending up. There must be cache misses. I don't 
don't think there's many. Well, so we can look at the ratio there. And now I'll switch to uh, this one, which is fast. You know, look, that never misses. If you order zero on BM, it'll load it into the... Yeah. What are those GitHub issues? Um, open blast has well gem. The Haswell kernel 16 by 6. Oh. Okay, it looks like they're bringing block A back. This is basically block A, I believe. Oh, I think they're also doing something very different. This V broadcast is Yeah. Okay, instead of doing the dot product at the end, they're, they're broadcasting out. Oh, that's like right. Oh. Yeah. V broadcast SS. That's reading like one float. Okay, they're reordering this stuff entirely. Let's back to the drawing board, boys. Back to the drawing board. Where's the drawing board? We're going back to it. Bring it. We're bringing. We're bringing block Y back. We're bringing block Y back. We're gonna make something that looks like that. I don't really understand why that's four by 24. No, it's, uh, I mean, yes, we, we can try to make the prefetch happen, but uh, stop trying to make fetch happen. Uh, yeah. No, it's not really a four by two kernel. That's not really right. The 
thing is they're they're doing the loads in like a very different way. Actually, let's just assume that the optimizer is smart. So when we do the base load here, What is it, whiteboard.com? Online whiteboard. Please let me draw fast. Oh, no, no. Okay. All right, all right, all right. Not too bad. All right. So we have our matrix here. Now we have our other matrix here. So what I was doing before, oh, that, that, that's shitty. We should do better than that, undo. Yeah, that's a solid line, okay. So what I was doing before, and this is our output matrix, C. So this is A, this is B, and this is C for Carl. Abe, Bob, and Carl. Uh, we don't need to give them names, but if we anthropomorphize them, we can maybe hate them less. Oh, that, that line's too long. Let's draw a shorter line. Okay, so what we're doing now is we're multiplying this, 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 this by this, 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 and this, and then we're storing it here. That's not what we want to do. What we actually want to do is load this, multiply it by all these, and then accumulate it in here. All right, do you see the, you see the difference? So that's why things were slow, and that's why we had that weird dot product. I'm not sure this even requires a change to, uh, we just have to go through. We just have to go through A one at a time and B K at a time. Should I put my phone away too? Sarcasm, bro? Sarcasm? Time out. Oh, you already had a time out. Oh, you just got a time out. Oh, that's great. That's great. Because we don't tolerate sarcasm in this channel. It's a serious channel. Um, I'm not even sure we need block X and block Y. <sighs> Let's not start entirely from scratch. Let's start from where we are. That's junk anyway, that can go. That's junk. Who trusts Y's? Put X back to eight. Basically, yeah, instead of doing the dot product here, we want to say, uh, what, what, is, what is the, what is broadcast? Broadcast MM256.
No, we want to load a single float. Oh, I don't know what the P stands for, but SS? All right, here we go, this one. Okay, MM256TY equals MM broadcast SS. And here we actually just need a float pointer, so it's just A, Y times 10 plus K. that right and now when we store these I'm hoping we can do this oh wait that would only be one thing then right answer. Uh, I can take the address of that. Expected sync. Okay, it's giving me the wrong answer. Let's bring out the debug. Probably add some code to clear TC. Uh, I don't. Yeah, maybe. We can we can deal with that later. Anything that's not in like the exact inner loop though is probably pretty fast. Um. Okay, this is wrong, and we're gonna try to figure out why. Is it because we're not bx over eight? Oh, I think I have to do plus k here, x here also. Okay, now we're getting the right answer. Uh, we can get rid of debug and make sure that's actually true. No, we're not. It's almost right, though. It's almost right. Look at how coherent those accesses are. So close, so close. Something like this. We're reading a single float. Okay, remember, let's go back to our whiteboard here and I'll show you all what we're doing. So we're reading a single float from A and we're multiplying it by that line in B. Oh. Do we wanna get rid of that? No. Wait, yes we do. We load a single A, and then we want to multiply it by, we want to multiply each thing in A by a single B. That one shouldn't increment at all. Should we get the print F's out? Well, wait, I think I might not even have the right 
I don't even have the right dimension here. We will we will pull the printfs out in a minute. Uh, so this isn't actually. Let's call this ik because it's not actually. It's inner k here. I think we. Set block x equal to one. I think it's actually one now. Right, so we're going through all this stuff. There's no more x. Yeah, but no, that's still not, okay, hang on. So let's call this TX, and we preload this guy here. It's wrong and very slow. I forget what the right answer for that's supposed to be. Those are all probably right. All right, because the matrix is going to say, so that's actually right. Um, those are right. the inner k, because here we're reading the entire k all at once. And then we multiply that, we add all those guys up. Block x is now 1, which is fine. Ty times Tx sub Tc0, Tc0 equals, and we just store those eight bytes. Oh. Is that the problem? No, this isn't right. Computing eight bytes of the output, clearly. Um, all right. Let's write the stupid one that does this. Let's let's write it without any uh any fancy FM. Did I miss an IK? Whenever you're confused, go back to matrix multiply for total idiots. And it looks something like this. Float ack. Um, a sub y 
n plus k times b sub x times n plus k x plus equals and then here we store in c sub y times n plus x equals x. That's giving us the right answer. Now let's think about what we're actually doing here. Seven sixty-eight, but it doesn't really matter. Um, you just have to do this like more times and more cache layers. But okay, let's figure out what we're doing here. So if I want to accumulate two of these, Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. So let's put that in a loop, right? See, this is this is how you program for for, for idiots like, like I'm just I'm dumb guys. Like uh, you know. Um if someone told you I was smart, I'm just persistent. Pretty good. Now, something to note that this is only being loaded here. Hmm, pretty good, right? Right, 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 right. Uh, all right, cool. Um, Now we're only getting 16 pathetic G flops. We can put back F fast math. All right, we get 50. But 50 is still not a lot. Okay, let's write this in terms of uh, the other registers. So the problem now is this, this k, this i k is inside of this n, which makes it not an i k at all. Like, 
we can stri it's not really ik it's actually ix right which sucks cuz it's not a coherent access it might not matter but i just have to think about how to do it a little better Now let's try our best to write this in terms of the uh, the fast stuff. Just it forces you to think about it. I know I could probably like sit down with a pen and paper and like derive all this, but uh, I don't know. Like I just like this approach better. Like I could think about okay, what is it actually doing? But I don't know. I feel like I get a better understanding when I do this. So this is not a coherent load is the problem. It's like striding like crazy. Do we not want the matrix transposed? No, we really want it like in blocks, you know? Do, do you see why I can't write that as a... Uh... How's the optimizer do it? It's doing like some crazy... You want to do eight by eight? You want to do? You want to do? You want to put back block Y? I mean, I certainly see how to do block Y now. The problem is these loads are not in a coherent axis. Like there, there's no intrinsic I can write. There's no, there's nothing I can write to do that load. That's why it's generated like all this complex crap. Wait. No, how's it doing that? Did it swizzle it? Hmm. Okay, here's a thought. What if we bring the k back to x? To, 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 what if we put the dimension here? No, I think then we're just back to what we had before. Maybe it's fine. Okay, k plus equals 8, and then we change this to be am. Well, let's first commit this, just so we have it. A... 
working at 50G. No, 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 no. Undo that. Uh, get reset. Cash grind die, perf data die now. I, I know I can rearrange the matrix beforehand. I don't want to have to do that. Um, let's think through if I have to really do that. <laughs> if I multiply two Ks, no, well, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right, I have to reorganize the matrix. That's very upsetting to me. So right now we have the matrices in, you know, X comma K and Y comma K, right? No, I, I, I understand, but I don't wanna reorg the fucking matrix, like. So, I mean, we could rearrange it to look something like this. Yeah, that's what tiling is. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, if we rearrange it to look like that, then that access becomes coherent. All right, let's start with BF. Uh, n times n over eight. It's not gonna be like, that doesn't fit on a stack. Why would you put that on a stack? Okay, we'll put it up here. Look, I put the swizzle outside. Is this really what I have to do? Sorry, I'll scroll what you can say. Um, this right, I should be able to now write BF uh, it's still going to be basically I can just move the IK out here
to multiply x by 8, do I not? Y still times n because those inner dimensions. Yeah. No, it's y times n over 8. Is that right? Hi, did I write that right? Is that how I swizzle? Tiny Grad is like nice like libraries to do all this and stuff. So it's, it's not gonna be too bad if I actually have to write any of this. Okay, y plus i y times 10, y times n over eight. No, 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 that's actually not right. No, it's just times n because x It is, it only goes to n over 8, but it's it's n over 8 long. Um, I have to do k times 8. Okay. That works. It managed to be slower. I don't really understand why that is. How is that slow? I worked so hard on it. All right, well now hopefully we can get rid of all this and we can use BFM. Oh my God. Anyone who mentions Strassens is banned uh, until they can write a faster Strassens than what I'm gonna write. You don't understand why it's slow. Okay, M two D six ack. We still load T A the same, but this we can write as this. Actually, right, I'll just write it as this. It doesn't matter. Compile it. I'll optimize whatever I do. Um, where's my matmol intrinsic? Okay, we're gonna broadcast SS to TY. Actually, we're gonna make this a this. We're gonna broadcast it. And then we're gonna TA. Um, ACK equals FMAD. And for the right back, we can say CM sub y sub n divided by a equals ack. Oh, wrong and slow. Oh, because we got we can get rid of that inner loop. Okay, um, why is that slow? I worked so hard on that, why is it slow?
it's slow because we're only doing one F mad. We should be doing more F mads. How much slower is it? It's slower. A lot slower. The crazy man, pay attention. Listen and then speak. Those are all super coherent accesses. To demonstrate it, I can show you how coherent they are. Uh, N is uh, 768. Works. Take another look at that little snippet we had from, from GitHub. Prefetching junk. Oh, it's here. Okay. They do a broadcast and then they do three map malls where they got from Yeah, okay, so they're they're like blocking Yes, that's uh, that's I don't know if that's what coherent actually means. I think I might be using that wrong. It might mean like coalesced, but yes, if you can access memory in order, things are better. See that it unrolled it twice. That didn't really help. We have to figure out how to use this multiple times because we are using that multiple times. In fact, that's interesting. Okay, okay. So this here doesn't depend on X. So we need an IY basically. This is block X. We need to bring block Y back. Call it three or something. No, nobody trusts threes. Let's call it four. Two. Plus equals block Y for int IY equals zero. IY less, no. Don't worry, loop unrolling is always, if you're worried about loop unrolling, 
You're worried about the wrong stuff. That's wrong. Now this is wrong. Okay, what are they doing? They do one read. Okay, let's go back to try to just do it with two. Whenever I try to do loops, I, I mess up. to do it with loops I mess up so let's just do literally one at a time okay what's the next y the next y is y plus one and here we can use call this acca acc b Stupid way to write it for people who are dumb. Slow and wrong. That's progress. Um, it's still doing the same number of broadcasts as FMADs, though. How? Oh. 
Oh, wait, this axis is the same every time. Oh, because this is accumulating in the y direction. Yeah, that seems okay. So I'm going to have to do one of those accesses then. Look at the comment top right of MAMO. What comment? I really don't understand how they're doing, they're not doing the same number of FMAs as broadcast. understand how to put an IY loop in. Let's try it. Yeah, exactly. Like people who coded in Fortran probably wrote this all out on a piece of paper first, and that was probably the smart thing to do. All right, all right, all right. There you go. 128. Done. I don't understand why. <laughs> there you go. That's full speed. Boom. Flops, boys. We got flops. Uh Yeah, we got we got flops. We did it, Reddit. Um all right, let's take a look in Object Comp and see what this actually looks like. Here's the loop. All right, I don't understand. I have the same number of broadcast SSs as I do FMADs. I don't understand how they managed to get more. It's probably another axis I can stride across to get. Okay, so this is being used the same for Two Ks. Okay, hang on, hang on. We we can go a little bit more. All right, let's write it out. Let's 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 follow my rule of writing it out first with uh like this. Okay. Actually, I don't even know if it gets faster than that. I mean, it's the same speed as NumPy, right? Yeah. All right, I mean, we already reached the max speed, so there's no point in. BMF can be a variable. I mean, that's that's as fast as it goes. There's no way to go faster. We're we're at the we're at the limit of how many uh, how many uh, f max 
we have. Um, let's just see if this works for larger things. I worry that it doesn't. It's a little slower with larger matrices because I'm not being cache aware bigger than L1. Um, I'll show you how to, let me just show you how to get those same uh, FM ads that they were getting. Oh, first, okay, gotta follow the rule. First, write it out without loops. Now notice we can do two FMNs there. Slower and wrong. Uh, why? Why do? Wait, did I commit the fast one? Should be right. X plus one. Yeah, 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 tiling to fit inside. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that. Um, why didn't that work? That should work. Okay, that works. But if I try to do two at once, it doesn't. Why not? Why doesn't that work? Oh. It works, it's just slow. Um, boys, is that real? Did we just beat NumPy? I think we just beat NumPy. Do the same four, let's make it fair. <laughs> Bros. All right, let's work out the theoretical max. Yo, wait, 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 we just beat NumPy. It's cause we pre-swizzled. Oh, pre-swizzle's cheap. Um, 32 flops at 4.95 gigahertz. Oh yeah, okay, look, look, the theoretical max Ah. Bros. NumPy? R code. <laughs> yeah, because we did the block Y. All right, um, let's make block X. Instead of writing R 
road to T-flops. I don't know. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, I assume, hang on. So let, let me just, uh, let me just make this run for a long time. Uh, yeah. So my CPU megahertz are this. Oh, it gets a little slower after it throttles down. <laughs> uh, so the theoretical max is the megahertz times this divided by 1,000. That's a good Wiseman score. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right. Wait till we do this on the GPU next. That thing's insanely fast. Yo. Okay. Uh, let's just let's just write this generically. Um. Things wrong, so we just have to do ix times block ix. Okay, there's actually nothing faster than 4.2. Dude. Dude, that's, that's beyond the theoretical max. I don't even understand how it's that fast. I mean, the CPU clock uh, varies a bit. Could probably turn off my... Uh, Multiply those numbers. I didn't like do anything dumb, did I? It didn't come from anywhere else, so like. I don't even know what to do with all this speed. We, we beat NumPy. I, I didn't think this was gonna happen. It's 
not multi-threading. We can confirm that. I mean, there's no way. Guys, this is C. This is C with like intrinsics. You think it's multi-threading somehow? Poor core 24. You're telling me there's a pragma I can use to multi-thread this? Bro, y'all believe that when I see it. No, it just it just sometimes must be running a little bit faster. Let's let's here. Ryzen. It's just the measured clock. Oh, okay. The maximum boost frequency is actually 4.9 gigahertz. So we were just getting a little bit faster. You, I'll come. I committed this code recently. You go check it out. You go make that pragma work and come back to me when it doesn't. <laughs> OMP parallel shared. No way. You need to play with BIOS to get 4.9. Standard is 4.7. So what if I'm getting 4.7? Sometimes I see more. Pragma multi-thread. You're telling me you can add one line. No, I have to link to OpenMP. Get out of here, bro. Get out of here with your linking to OpenMP. Cool. Wanna look at object dump and see our final product? There you go. Does it broadcast? I don't know why it does moves. Trust the compiler, I guess. Why does it do a move there and not? Oh, also, can I make this less if I'm using FMAs? Nope, I can't. How are they different? I don't understand. Can I try O3? I bet you it's slower. Or probably the same. It's the same. Doesn't matter. Uh, we don't need fast math anymore. It's the same. And.
I think the reason we're getting the higher speed is because we pre-swizzle. Alright, well this wasn't supposed to take this whole time, we were supposed to get to use this incredible GPU, but we don't. And we're going to see if we get the theoretical maximum on the GPU too. But that I believe is a lot harder. But we hit the theoretical max on the CPU. Um, wait a second. How bad is their multi-threading in NumPy? The multi-threading must suck, right? Because I have 16 cores. If we turn this off, all I get is that. Could you push again? Done. All right. Mm, how easy is this to multi-thread? Should we multi-thread it? We would just make the, we would divide the outer loop up by threads. That would all be okay. I'm actually gonna add something else here. Taking six milliseconds to multiply this matrix. Um, well, I, I guess for completeness, we should show you that we can probably beat NumPy on this too. Uh, so right now they're getting a solid 136. So let's see what happens if we increase it. We get 146. Wow. Wait. What? That was slow before. How's that fast now? Cool. I must have fixed something. Why would anyone use NumPy when you can get real speed? Let's go bigger. Painful. Actually, let me make the Python match and write the milliseconds. One second. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, well, we hit the limit. Uh, I'm not even going to go into why that's wrong. Uh, probably what happened is we have to go Let's figure out how big our caches are. I 
not even in the L2 cache anymore. Already with one or two or four eight. Um, sixteen megs. Okay, I guess we're in the L3 cache. How come there's two L3 caches? How are there two L3 caches? Oh, per CCX. Okay, so this is a, uh, okay, this is all fitting in L3. I'm actually surprised. So I didn't do anything to be cash aware there. I'm surprised that that's still fast. That's a good size to focus on. Let's remove NumPy's restriction on threads and let's crush it even harder. And then that's the end of the stream. Yeah, we're gonna crush this so hard. NumPy, you're pathetic with those threads. Where do we get some real threads? In C. It should be very easy to thread. I don't actually say that. Let's do that. Should be fine. Now, if I set end threads to two, watch, it's gonna be twice as fast. You ready? It's gonna be wrong, but it's gonna be twice as fast. All right, cool. Um, now, let's plus n times n over two. Oh. I have to put C in there as well. Eh, I don't really like that. Instead of passing in that, we'll pass in Hmm, 
assume parallel. Um, Wait, D debug hasn't been a thing for a long time. Oh, no, that, oh, no, wait, D debug still works. Uh, oh, it probably seg faulted. You sure it didn't seg fault because you didn't load the file? It's because you didn't load the file. Okay, there's sag faults. for stupid yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably shouldn't uh... you can't cast pointers like that <laughs> uh... Sorry, it's, it's, it's the bad code part of the stream. It's the part of the stream where we don't write good code because, you know, it's late. And we got things to do today, boys. We got things to do today. with threads p thread I hate p threads I really want to use some like signaling up the documentation for pthread create. My editor do that for me. Try with one thread and see if it's still fast. You're going to the kernel. Kernel slow. Kernel very slow. Uh, 
include p thread. Okay, kernel not so slow. Okay. Um, I just want to actually say, let's just do this. Uh, if def if n threads one, let's just keep the old behavior around. to void star from smaller type. Why do I care about that? All right, look at that, double the speed. That's pretty good, boys. That's pretty good. Are we ready to get one teraflop? Are we ready to laugh at pathetic ass NumPy with its wavering 600-ish gigaflops while we sit here with one teraflop? Uh, how do I turn this off? I don't care about this. You happy if I do that? Okay, you're happy if I do that, fine. Let's try four threads. Why wasn't four thread? Oh, I didn't save. Oh, yes. Are we ready for the one teraflop challenge? I was getting one teraflop in the beginning. I don't know why NumPy got slower, but. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this getting, is this gonna be? <sighs> Yo, there's a lot of variance there. We gotta go bigger on the matrices. We gotta go bigger on the matrices and then what are we gonna do about our cache coherency? I don't think it'll matter. NumPy is getting a little under a teraflop. We get less. <laughs> Try 4096 threads, bro. I don't think you know how threads work. Um, no, I mean, the problem now is there's just so much overhead in creating and uh, joining the thread. <laughs> Once things get small, you just become entirely dominated by overhead. faster with 16 though. Eight threads shouldn't, eight threads is not fast. We need 16 because we have 16 cores. All right, 32 threads is just gonna slow us down because hyperthreaded cores are not cores. But 16, because p thread create is slow. Mm, okay, okay, I have an idea. Let's use a semaphore. Thread conduit. Just block 
on a condition variable. It's not really right. Um, we want to like pre-create the threads. Use a shared mem counter. Okay. Now we're going to create the threads up here. And actually, no, first we're going to take the lock. might be okay actually. Join might be fast. It should still be fast. Mm, not fast. Whoa, look at how many G flops that is. Whoa. A wild number of G flops. It's because we cheated. the increment? No, that should be fine. All time? What happened to my teraflop? My teraflop go. I don't understand. Is that fast? That's pretty fast. Oh, did we make it bigger? No, we didn't. Four threads gets that, but I don't understand. Where's my teraflop? Oh, is this one of those like you want them to progress in? I'm still into hitting 280 with 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 two threats. I'm close.
Hmm. Actually, it might not have actually been starting the threads. Understand. I incremented and ready. I did it in a lock. It's marked volatile. What did I do wrong? No, I, I mean I still need the starting mutex. Uh alright, alright, alright. C atomic. Um, these are in C, uh, these are in C++ 11. Fine, fine. It just looks too nice. Uni STD, thank you. No, it's not. We're not just going to switch because it didn't work. We're going to figure out why it didn't work. Oh, they're all zero because oh, I didn't release the lock yet. Oh, I see. Never mind. That's fine. Uh, not really, though. Pretty good. You think memory access is the bottleneck? No, but it was faster before. You, th you think it has nothing to do with any of this? It might be. Oh, we're still a lot faster than NumPy. Oh, wait. Was my teraflop? GCC atomic intrinsics.
C11. Okay, hang on. Do we have C11? I, I don't want to use C++. Atomic fetch add. Do I need to make an atomic int? Is that allowed in C? Right, it compiles. Maybe I can just seems fine somehow. Is that only allowed in C? like it's memory access bound. I made them atomic ends, probably good. Those probably all start really close, like that's... Okay, all right, fine, we'll use a condition variable. Is there a pthread condition variable initializer? Probably not. Oh, there is one, nice. Hopefully you guys went to operating system school and you know how to use these things. Um, calling pthread con signal under the protection of the lock. We don't really care about that actually. No, but we have to release the lock. Because you exit the condition variable with the thing locked, right? No, we don't actually need this is this is just as good of a way to do it, I think.
Now we see it has to acquire the lock. A release lock when thread wakes up again, reacquire lock before returning. So we have to first acquire the lock. And it's basically the same thing, right? So I could put a CV weight in there, um, and then I wouldn't acquire the lock in the outer loop. I would just con signal it, but I don't know. Some of the threads might not be there. I'd have to get a count of the numbers. Oh, and I didn't even do broadcast. Caller must hold lock. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Because I have it locked, then I start the threads. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's my spin weights there. Okay, my single thread performance, insane, super good. My double thread performance, not bad, not bad, pretty good, pretty good, it's okay. Could be better. But then once we get to my 16 thread performance, where's my teraflop? Yes? Tell me. We're almost done. Wait, it was literally faster before. Can anyone take a sec to elaborate on why you would earn this stuff, learn this stuff? You'll get a timeout, bro. And you can take your timeout and you can think about why that's a stupid question. And it turns out there are no stupid questions, there's just stupid people. Why is this? this seems slower than it was before. Are we just getting greedy? T-flop should be easy. Yo, I agree. I agree. How come I can't get a T-flop? It's going to have to wait for another stream, though. Alex is home, and that means there's food. Copy the matrix. Oh, there we go. There's a T-flop. How many threads was that with? Why is it not faster with 16? Yeah, we can we can max out a teraflop. Why is it so inconsistent also? Shouldn't be any scheduling issues. Should we pin them to cores? Um,
Is read contention a thing? It shouldn't be. I, I don't think it is. I mean, I don't know. I might be wrong, but... Uh, what is a CPU zero macro? Oh, also, we should probably use the p thread thing and not sket set affinity. All right, cool. Oh, p thread self. Um, what macro? What? How do I get C? gonna make H top look prettier. Use some undeclared identifier CPU set. I call it set. Undefined reference? What? Those are macros. Do I have to link to sked or something? Define GNU source. Okay, it's a little better. Uh, let's run it for a bit longer so we can look on. Oh, look, it's beautiful. Oh, see, look, look at my beautiful, look at my beautiful CPUs. Oh, nice. All right, um, 16. Oh, I do believe, wait, let's just make sure that we're not getting duped by the hyper-threading scam. Um, siblings, 32, core ID. How do I? Yeah, okay, those are the fake hyper-threading cores. I know what's happening. Wait, I know what's happening. We're getting throttled. Look at that. We're getting throttled to 3,400. Oh, look. We're getting 1.5 teraflops, just. All right, fine. How do I turn off my thingies? How do I turn off my, how do I turn off my stupid, uh... All right, does everyone understand, first off, why it has to be pinned to a core? If anyone doesn't understand that, think about how caches work. I think we're just getting throttled. That's the, well, first off, can we talk about how that performance is now very reliable? I don't think it's a memory bandwidth thing. Four. But now when we get to eight, the scaling stops. That's pretty good. But then look, if we go to 16, it actually gets slower than eight. Oh, for a little bit. Look at that, 1.5 teraflops. Wait, let's work out what the theoretical maximum is. Theoretical maximum is 2.5 teraflops. <laughs> Multi core theo max equals. Wow, that's actually pretty good. The CPU can't hold the high boost on all the cores. Yeah, because it runs out of power. Can't hold anything, really. Is that sustainable? No.
No way that boost is one teraflop. It is. No, if we can if we can not throttle the CPU. I just get hit by throttling. Wait, why do you think it can't be? That's the problem. Don't do six. Six is a bad number of threads. If you think six is good, don't do six. Okay. Yeah, look, see, look, that's sustainable there. See the top four? Uh, wait, how do I check my CPU power draw? So these, these ones are scams. Uh, you can look that I'm not, I don't know why it says I'm on 16, but. Why are all these other ones? Oh, I don't know what CX is. Oh, that's like idle, okay. But just look at one, two, just look at zero through three. Oh, uh, no, there's no way hyperthreading is gonna help. But we do have a sustainable high frequency on those CPUs of 44, uh, 4400. So, oops. If we're getting that times 156.8. In theory, right. No, that's not right. Sorry. Times four times 32. Okay, 573 is a theoretical max. I'll divide it. So we're hitting that if that's the, uh, the frequency we're managing to hold. But now, I think when we go up to eight, we start to lose frequency. Yeah, look. Look, our frequency is now pleb frequency. Oh. Hey, this was supposed to tell me about power usage. It didn't do that. Yeah, it throttles. We can't do 12. Don't talk about 12. 12 is not a multiple. <laughs> it throttles, yeah. Dude. Uh, and now look how badly it throttles at 16. It throttles so bad that 8 is actually faster. Look, look at the pathetic frequencies I'm getting. GPUs don't throttle like this. No, it has nothing to do with the lock. You need to try it with throttling disabled, okay. AMD CPU disable throttling. Okay, let's first, for safety, we gotta look at the temperatures.
throw a new window up here monitoring my temperatures, guys. If the temperatures get too hot, just like scream out, we're overheating the reactor. Uh, Okay, it's showing me the temperature of some PCI adapters. I just pressed enter a lot. I hope that was okay. No, where's my CPU? It's like a new thing that's not LM sensors anymore. That can't be the temperature. No, it's like literally the temperature of my Wi-Fi chip. I tried manually loading the K10 temp. Oh, maybe it's this? What's K10 temp? Oh, it probably is this. Yeah, okay, it's this, there we go. Oh my God, that's getting hot. 90C. Ninety C. We're overheating the reactor, boys. Wait, this isn't even. No, that's only sixty five C. Okay. All right, can somebody paste that AMD disable throttling? Turn on the performance governors. Performance governors enabled, Captain. That didn't do anything. It's terrible. Ask you want to tip, don't change CPU frequency. Great. If only we could get the 16 not to throttle. Oh man, did you see that? Did you see that performance? Just for a little bit, we had a glimpse of God tier performance. And then it all went away. Oh, look at that. Look at 
those terrible frequencies. Don't throttle. Stop it. Stop it. Go faster. You're not even, it's not even warm. It's not even warm right now. I gotta go at 2.30. I gotta I got shower and shit. I, I gotta go, but... Bros, it's not even warm. There's a frequency. fast. Well, that's a good frequency. Why can't we get that? Don't worry about the CPU utilization. That's not the problem. We have a performance governor. Can I just set the frequency? It's literally below the min frequency. Let's see about not changing CPU frequency. I don't know about that. Oh, it's so fast for a little bit. We could just experience that speed all the time. Yeah, why is it not going to 90C? That's a great question. Oh, thermal D. Do we see the right temp? Yeah, that's the right temp. It just, no, when I use a lot of, look, if I use four threads, it gives me performance. But it uses, because look, look at the CPU frequencies, right? They're high. By the way, for all reasons, this stuff doesn't scale with, uh, it, it, it's, it's non-linear because in order to increase the frequency, you have to increase the core voltage. We dealt with this with, with comma. Um, What is the on-demand service? App C CPU frequency. CPU governor from on demand to performance. If you're running CPU speed, stop. Sure that no K on demand threads are running. No. Check if you have something called thermal D running. Have something called APSI thermal PM. Kernel thread. <laughs> I don't have thermal D. Oh, just 
be a little bit faster. It's not even getting hot. By the way, who wrote these crap throttling policies? Yeah, how do I disable it? Here, Arch Linux, they're gonna know. AMD control. Set P state voltages and clock speed. Uh-oh. This sounds dangerous. Yeah, I did that. I don't trust this thing. We set the governors to perform here. Can adjust. All right, well, this is by Fly Goat. Does it only work on mobile? Throttle stop. I have an idea. You ready for my idea? Sleep five. Five's long, one. My idea didn't work. I thought that would... There we go. Look at that one. We're consistently getting 1.3 teraflops using the power of sleep. Yeah, I set my CPU power governor to performance. Um, someday we can look more into this, but I think it's been a great stream. We are consistently getting 1.3 teraflops here. Um, by the way, for reference, uh, NumPy is pulling a pathetic 650 gigaflops. When you're right here, we're getting 1.4 teraflops, and there's a lot more to come if we figure out, well, it's just because of the performance. It's just, I'm just hacking that thing. I'm sure there's a way to turn those governors off, get maximum power out of the CPU, but is that really what we should be doing? No, because next week, 
We're gonna do this on GPU and we're gonna have so much speed and power. It's gonna be unbelievable. We got memory accesses, beautifully coalesced. Um, oh man, we can, we can just, just for a little while, if I could have the maximum speed out of this CPU, we could get 2.5 teraflops out of a single Ryzen, which would be amazing. Convolutions and matrix multipliers are pretty much the same thing, uh, depending on how you're doing them. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm not gonna commit that, that's, that's garbage. That's garbage, you, you all you all know. Nah, we'll just comment this out. Hack around throttling. Uh, but let's leave this at eight, which is where we see the best performance. Given that we're throttled, we're getting about a consistent teraflop. That's pretty good. We're running at a nice cool 80 degrees C. Hopefully you guys hear that fan in the background. All right, we're going to let the non-subscribers talk for a little bit. Um, thank you all for watching. That is today's stream. The matrix multiplication is real. It is faster than NumPy in both single-threaded performance and multi-threaded performance. Theoretical maximum, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, the SSH connection so fast because the PC is a foot away and they're wired together. Um, so why is it faster than NumPy? Because you know uh, we wrote good code. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's probably not it. Um, Probably has more to do with the fact that NumPy is not a JIT. Like, Open Blast isn't a JIT. We JIT everything in TinyGrad, so this stuff's not a problem. Um, so, like, this can hard code all the strides into the assembly language instructions, um, which is really what you want to do. This is where you got to be today. It's the modern world, JIT everything. Um, you know what? I'm making Portugal a band. Can we make Portugal a band word? I don't know how to do it, but I don't like discussing Portugal, okay? They're bringing up Portugal. They know I don't like it. We don't talk about Portugal. That's right. That's right. Um, there's not enough crime. You, you want somewhere between Portugal levels of crime and Mexico levels of crime. Um, oh, lazy tiny grad is fast. Yeah, lazy tiny grad is fast. Uh, need better CPU cooling? No, it's not my cooling. My CPU is only running at 70 degrees. Um, it's power limit throttling, not temps. Uh, oh, I guess I, no, but like, what? power and temperature should be completely correlated, right? I don't think it's power limits on the motherboard. We didn't even get to use our great uh, brand new Radeon XT. The reason we bought an ATI GPU, by the way, is all of their, sorry, an AMD GPU, is their instruction sets open source. So we're gonna figure out how to get the theoretical maximum flops out of this thing. And then we're gonna make TinyGrad 
get those theoretical maximum flops. Uh, yeah, well, no. Temps will hit 90 if I do four cores. I, I really don't understand the thermal policy. Um, we're going to make Tiny Grad hit those flops. Yo, we were doing the math. Like, none of these things are even close to the theoretical maximum flops. Um, on so many different platforms. So yeah, we uh, you know we 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 swizzle to eight. Um, we can keep things swizzled. Oh, there's so much there's so much performance to gain. There's so much performance to gain, but we'll have to do it on a different stream. Thank you all for watching. Um, I I don't know why it's throttling. Yeah, I'm not hitting the power limits. Definitely not. Uh, but we gotta go. We got things to do today. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you got a noob lesson on how to multiply a matrix. We did it faster than NumPy with one thread, faster than NumPy with multiple threads. And we taught noob something. Sorry, why is this so, why is the color balance so bad on this webcam? Uh, I'm sorry about that, but uh, no, 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 no. We don't need any prefetching. We're hitting the maximum FMAs, bro. Like there's nothing we can do faster. We're not memory bound. We're limited by the actual number of FMAs in the uh in the in the cpu right you, you can't go faster than that right i'm, I'm using I, i'm at like 95 percent um so you can you can't actually can't go faster but uh there's also nothing wrong with my multi-threading my multi-threading gets the theoretical maximum with two uh but because with two uh we're not hitting look it's using more watts with two than it is with 16 and this is probably just due to some tuning thing because wow everything's tuned terribly like all the cars if everyone just spent more time tuning we could get so much performance out of everything ah oh, thank you hyper breezy i'm glad look i know people were complaining they're like george just always jumps into a project so we literally started out with an empty file and we wrote this code to multiply matrices